I don't know, I man. I try. That's too much work for me. I'm out. It's not easy. Good. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not. Yay! Look at you. I feel like I have an acorn head. What <laughs> is that, though? Hey, that looks actually that looks I have better. A, a headband. It's a head warmer. A, a women's headband. I'm gonna <laughs> get this. Hey, you sure you want this? Oh no. Unless you would you rather have the buff on? Like. Oh man. I'd rather just have it all work, but unfortunately my computer's not that good. You want to just do the buff then? Oh man, here we go. <laughs> I think this is just how. Uh, we'll just run like this. All right. Now. Okay. The struggle. Here we go, boys. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's do this. Okay. Oh, we got we got one person in. Patrick, he, he can't wait. He must have seen all the social media posts promoting this dang thing. <laughs> all right. We promoted yeah. this the most out of anyone so far, I think. For anyone uh, just logging in, wondering what in the heck Adam's doing. So he doesn't have like a, a computer that was made, you know, past 1994, I think. And so he can't generate like the virtual background that June and I can without a green screen. Like we're, we're getting by with pure technology and, uh, and frankly money. And Adam, I think he found his, uh, I think he found his uh, laptop at the bottom of the Pacific up here, jigged it up, put it in some rice. And uh, what he's trying to do now is emulate the background we have with a green screen, but with, <laughs> with the green screen he has, his eyebrows get wiped out, his hair gets wiped out. And so yeah. he, he has to dress up and, and look like a condom basically to stand out against his <laughs> green screen and hide his hair, hide his eyebrows. So he's gonna put scotch tape over his eyebrows <laughs> later. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah. All right, for, for everyone uh, on time, we're not on time. This is the never imitated, therefore ever duplicated best fishing basement show, the shelter show episode eight. The butter one, you guys know why it's the butter one, and uh, big things. We're, we're we're doing some big things today. Not only are we um, joining you guys on a Friday, um, we might have uh, special guests dropping by to give us some COVID news. We're gonna give away uh, prizes throughout the episode um, for the fundraiser giveaway. Um, again, um, I put together a fundraiser through my channel. It's all I've been posting and talking about because I haven't really been fishing. And uh, and I uh, wanted to do something good with my channel and I'm benefiting um, some family uh, for their daycare center. And so that's wrapped up. Uh, we have all the entries over $1,700 raised at uh, $5 per entry. So you guys do the math. That's like almost 350 individual $5 entries. And uh, I'm going to take those. Um, I have a nice big spreadsheet. Um, Adam is going to be running an automated number picker. And uh, for every entry that you guys sent me, you guys are a value, right? So there's about 350 uh, entries and uh, Adam's going to go ahead and uh, randomly pick a number. We're gonna try to do it as legit as possibly. There's definitely no um, inside, you know, track things. I have about eight prizes to give away uh, throughout the show. And we're gonna do that today. Do you guys wanna, just, do you guys wanna kick it off with a prize giveaway? You guys down with that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's well, go. Let's go. Yeah. You guys know who we are. This is uh, Ish with Fish. What's up, Adam? What's up, June? June, you need a haircut, bro. What's going on over there? I know. I know. My hair is kind of long. <laughs> I, can't, I can tell it's coming out of my nose now. <laughs> you, need, <laughs> you need to invest in some Corsair clippers. So a couple episodes ago, a few episodes ago, oh my, uh, gosh. my haircut was whack. Sorry, honey. It was whack. She came back like two, three weeks later, which is like just actually like a few days ago. Number two fade on the side, three, and then a four and five on the top. It's looking pretty good. And then she like, you know, shaved me a little bit and cut it clean. You know what? I don't think I'm ever going to pay for a haircut again because frankly, I don't have the greatest hair and I don't need someone to charge me $23 for every haircut. So June, it's time, bro. It's time. Where's my Where's my haircut? Kid? I'm scared, I, I've been I'm to, show scared you guys. to cut my hair. I'm scared to. <laughs> How many, how many people in the comments have been cutting their own hair? Slee Lee, need a haircut, Adam June. Well, we, we can't even see Adam's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it's so long right now. That's not bad. I can't even show how you. Many, how many people in the comments have been cutting their own hair? Oh, 
what's going on over there yeah so uh, appreciate you guys uh, all joining we're seeing uh the chat room fill up we got 50 people so what's up 50 people the record is like 126 so we'll see if we can yeah, let's that break today. that today let's yeah. break that today um yeah so adam okay. Please do the honors. We're going to give away our first fundraiser prize. So this is how we're going to do it. Okay. So for everyone that's entered, thank you again. We're going to have two prize giveaway segments. Okay. So there's going to be the actual tackle giveaway. Everyone is eligible for that. You can only win one prize because I kind of want to, some people drop like some big money and they're practically going to win everything if I don't, um, you know, do it this way. So what I want to do is be fair in the prize giveaway segment of the giveaway. Everyone has a chance to win. Everyone can only win one thing. Okay. Once we get to the charter spot giveaway, it resets. If you've spent more than five dollars, uh, you have more than one entry, and that gets you into the charter giveaway. Because I want to give everybody the chance to have a shot at that also. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it would suck if somebody donated like a couple hundred bucks and then they walked away with like one lucky craft. Um, I know that's kind of how it works and some prices, but this is the way we're going to do it. I'm trying to be fair to everyone. So uh, yeah, so Adam, do me the honors. We have oh, 346 spots, um, uh, entries rather. The first prize, the first three prizes actually are going to be a CSA beanie and, and two Lucky Crafts, not just any Lucky Crafts, but a unreleased, glow sardine cherry color and the sexy smelt color two that i've been throwing in my dreams because i haven't been fishing because they're not supposed to right <laughs> yeah oh and a csa beanie so adam do me a favor go ahead and pick the first winner of the ish with fish fundraiser giveaway who's gonna get this beautiful set winner is... let's go 122 122 all right so let me jump over to my screen over here i have the screen i don't want to show um everyone's names for privacy plus i don't want to show like what everyone donated so that's 122 the winner is sean Varosky. sean Varosky, thank you sean this is going to be mailed to you for all winners i'm going to be following up after the shelter show over the weekend and uh, making sure i get your information and getting your stuff to you so sean Varosky. Thanks so much, bro. You'll be the new proud owner of a CSA beanie and two unreleased Lucky Crafts. Very good. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Congratulations, Sean. Yeah. Hey, uh, you guys, when we interviewed uh, J&H Tackle, uh, Josh, if you guys caught that interview a couple weeks ago, he said he's going to send us some sweet rods. I've been wondering if you guys have been able to uh, put it out in the surf yet. I'm really curious because I don't get to fish as much as you guys. Let me know. Have you guys been able to uh, mess around with the OB rod? The OB. I, I, I got mine. Oh, I saw Adam's uh, video. He's already, he put up a fish already there. But hey, mine, I haven't one. gone. I just won. Huh? Not Marie, just I one. know. I saw okay. that. Dang. Yeah. Don't, don't Mine, admit I, it. I'm still here. So as a, as a short butt rod compared to your standard, um, you know, surf rod, which normally has a longer butt, uh, what do you guys think? So in my, like I said this in my right. opinion, but in my opinion, like, I don't know if it's, maybe it's just me because I just used them my whole life. I, I prefer a little bit longer, but so like, I, I don't know. I wish I had the rod next to me. I could show it, but the butt is like maybe, I don't know, a foot. I don't know, June, you think it's longer than that? Anyways, it's close to that. And then, but my normal setup is probably like maybe closer to two feet. So maybe somewhere in the middle, I feel like would be ideal for me but i also have a little longer arms so i feel like that might play into it um and i will like the shorter it is the easier it is on your shoulder and everything else but so that that's my take on it but overall i mean it's i mean it's expensive but it's a nice rod i mean like i said in my video i've never thrown anything that expensive before so <laughs> yeah, i have a whole bunch of rods and you know for any surf guys um you know typically you start out heavy yeah, I got it you buy something that's a little too big they have like the traditional long butts which are like an east coast thing you're really meant to like torque out some big weight you know like the the tomahawk chop cast right and uh you know with the surf i mean you know uh, the surf over here at least in, in on the west coast my opinion is that we just don't have the size 
yeah, look at that. That's a, it's a beautiful rod. Um, we just don't have the size on average of, of uh, the surf species compared to the East Coast of Florida. And so you're not throwing out, um, you know, gigantic weights or big presentations. And so you can get away with little stuff. So the West Coast really adopted salmon rods, steelhead rods for the surf. And now there's more and more specialized uh, rods along that vein that are meant for the surf. And so this is a Japanese style surf rod, actually. It's kind of in line with the lighter uh, presentation West Coast fishing. And um, I saw Adam's rod, it's it's really nice. The build's pretty cool. Like I said this in the video, I feel like it's it's like a sports car in the form of a fishing rod. So like, like you wouldn't go off-roading with a, you know, whatever Lamborghini, but so like right. I wouldn't throw bait with this one, but if you just want like speed or you want like ideal for um, plugging all day, all night, whatever, um, then yeah, that's that's pretty much what this one is for. Yeah, yeah, weight is, you know, definitely consideration. If you, you know, if you only have a couple hours to fish, you probably don't care so much about weight. But if you are casting all day, every ounce counts. And by the end of the day, I mean, what do you want to throw? Something that weighs like three, four pounds, like an old Shakespeare ugly stick rod with like a gigantic like slammer or something that weighs under a pound, a rod like that with like, you know, a, a modern day reel made with modern materials. That's like in the three to 4,000 size. I mean, it's amazing what, what you can do with, with, uh, with the materials and money if you're willing to spend that much. Um, June, I see you showing us kind of the Dial Luna and how that's being put together. Um, I wanted to uh, talk to you guys quickly about um, COVID. I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but actually we're going to do something a little different. Um, I, you know, I talk from just from the seat of somebody who reads the newspapers and uh, watches the news, just like you guys reading online articles. Uh, but I don't have a medical background. I don't have a scientific background. So, I mean, who am I to tell you anything? So we actually have somebody within the YouTube community that can give us um, their interpretation of the, the rules and what's going on and uh, what's really been happening in, um, in you know, the, the COVID area era, at least in the uh, greater California area. So without further ado, let me bring on my boy. Let me see if I can pull this off. Here he comes. Here he comes. Let's see if he can get his stuff together. <laughs> Moo Moo Outdoors. Ooh. What's up, Moo? How's it going? For anyone that doesn't know, uh, Mumu Outdoors is a big time kayaker and he represents the kayak community uh, in the Bay Area. So what's up, hey, Mumu? How's it going? You're copying my style, man. Come on. <laughs> what's up, Mumu? Oh, Mumu, you're on mute. It's it's mute, mute, indoors. <laughs> Mumu mute. How about now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. All right. Wow, cool. Mumu, you, you have like a really nice mic. You're taking this seriously. Look at this. I know. <laughs> What are you doing your in your free time with with all this uh, nice audio gear? Is there a kayak ASMR channel we don't know about? <laughs> I wish there was, man. <laughs> it's been tough. It's been tough. I mean, I'm going insane. I need to get on the water. <laughs> yeah, you're struggling, man. No, I, I I feel you. I'm in that position too. I haven't been going out nearly as much as I want to go, and you don't realize how addicted you are to fishing until it's taken away from you. And like the first time in my lifetime I've ever been put in a position, other than getting married. <laughs> <laughs> where I can't fish when I can't fish where I'm on. Sorry, honey, I love you. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's a struggle. Um, but it really, the, the reason why uh, I, I wanted to bring you onto the show. So number one, thank you so much, and you, you look like you're all down to, to give us um, you know, your time. Uh, but I wanted you to introduce yourself and give everyone your professional background because I don't think a lot of people know this. Okay, uh, first of all, who, those guys who don't know me, I'm Mumu Outdoors. I'm a little can you guys see me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm a little bit, little bit tiny channel uh, compared <laughs> to um, Ish and Adam and June. Uh, however, uh, I've been in working in EMS emergency medical services for last twenty plus years, so I mainly work on the ambulance side of it. So. Yeah, yeah. So Moo is a uh, first responder, and if anyone can give us like the inside scoop on, um, you know, what what's happening, you know. With a voice within the fishing community, the YouTube community, it would be Moo. So, so thank you, Moo, for, for coming on. And I brought you on because um, quickly, I wanted you to give us your impression of how serious this was when um, COVID, the, you know, the pandemic kind of started taking hold of at least the Bay Area and now the world. Um, and uh, eventually, like, I'd like to know what, what your thoughts are on 
how we're going to manage moving forward. So like in your position, in your role, uh, what was it like when, when things kind of started, you know, falling apart? <laughs> so I think it was uh, mid-March when the Bay Area, six Bay Areas, um, placed the Sierra Twin order. The six counties, uh, right? Six counties, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, when that happened, I was like, oh, man, this is for real. Uh, yeah. But it didn't really hit me because I didn't see the numbers that I had to deal with in the field. And uh, but starting around like late March, I'm getting more and more COVID-19 patients. And uh, at, at, at one point uh, from like early April to mid April, I had more COVID patients than non-COVID patients. Wow. So it was, uh, it was pretty serious. Have you ever seen um, a, not a sickness, but have you ever seen like one singular event uh, kind of flip the script on the normal like person that you would transport? Um, like, like, hey, a, like fire, earthquake, smoke inhalation from the recent fires, you know, or like a bad flu. No, what do you mean? Like, has anything uh, as severe as COVID kind of taken over the majority of the cases that you're seeing? Oh, uh, no, nothing like this. It's so this is like, like this, yeah. So it's unprecedented. Yeah, nothing like this ever happened in my lifetime. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so when you do notice the, the spike in patients transporting, you obviously know it's for real and the Facebook posts, you know, the, the, the news media isn't BSing. I mean, it's a real thing, right? Oh, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Uh, yeah. um, I was actually getting really scared uh, because we were running out of PPEs. Um, yeah, at one point we almost ran out of N95s and then luckily we got something, we got some donated from uh, some organizations and next thing hand sanitizer we were running out like almost zero and wow. gown we were running out so like every week we were, we were having struggles like we were worrying getting stressed out because you don't have PPE what are we going to do you know we yeah. can't really treat the patient without PPE and get ourselves infected and give it to our families you know right so yeah, so for anyone that doesn't know, PPE stands for Personal Protection Equipment, and it's that disposable layer between the responders and the patients, and really, it's one-time use. I mean, you might see in newspapers that, or you might see in articles that people say, oh, to reuse it, leave it in UV, microwave it, boil it, whatever. Well, reusing PPE was never, PPE is not designed to do that, right? It's not designed to be uh, Yeah, they're, so. they're more designed to use single use, but mm -hmm. uh, as far as N95, you can use it all day long okay um but at one point i was using the same and i divide for two weeks wow. instead of yeah instead of one day yeah that, that that sucks because you are putting your life on the line essentially because no one knows if they are going to be uh if it's going to be a mortal you know bug they don't you know a lot of people are asymptomatic so they don't show symptoms you just don't know if you catch it if you are going to be on a incubator or um intubated, you know, like two weeks later. So it's just a roll of the dice every time you are uh, called to pick up a COVID patient, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, one of the severe cases I've seen was an uh, elderly gentleman, you know, who developed shortness of breath and within 24 hours, he was intubated. Wow. So I mean, he went down, he went crashing down really fast. That's okay. the, the uh, worst I've ever seen. Okay. And also a lot of skilled nursing facilities, they have COVID units now. So some some places have like 25% of their patients in isolation. Some places as much as 50. Wow. So, so yeah. So, you know, I, I bring Mu on, um, of course, in the spirit of supporting the fishing community by bringing kind of a real, um, you know, real kind of boots on the ground um, story and point of view of how real this is. So, you know, we're kind of talking about the, um, you know, the, the swing up in cases, we're starting to kind of enter what, you know, everyone calls phase two, the uh, kind of easement of shelter in place. And, you know, what we've basically done is, you know, shelter in place was, was a mandated kind of countrywide thing to allow the healthcare system to catch up and kind of brace for the amount of projected, um, you know, people needing treatment. Like if we, if we didn't do that, uh, the hospital healthcare system would have been overwhelmed and we would have had a severe crash. Like people would have been choking and dying on their own lung fluid in the streets, right? So we got to that point. We've reached that point and we're starting to see easements to allow people back into society. So my point of view is 
it's still out there. Like that bug is not going away. Like it's still a, a very real threat just because we're starting to be allowed to go outside with masks, go to restaurants, blah, blah, blah. It's still out there. So um, what are your thoughts on what life is going to be like in phase two? Um, I don't know exactly how many phases there are going to be, but uh, this is going to be going to be around for a while, uh, at least a few months. Um, my guesstimation is it will be like six months. Okay. So back to go back to totally normal. Uh, I'm being optimistic too about that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I think the general consensus is that you know until the population as a as a world uh, attains you know herd immunity or is administered like a vaccine, like how long is it going to, let's say we do find a, a vaccine and they say best case, it's going to, you know, be found by end of the year. How long is that going to be take to be administered to 8 billion people, or at least, you know, how many people um, need it and that haven't caught it and developed antibodies to it. So uh, not to get too like scientific, but basically the current situation we find ourselves in, my opinion is that get used to it. You're going to be outside with a mask. You're not going to be able to go to a concert. You're not going to be able to go to West Marine and uh, you know, show up with a, a bunch of people like normal you know what i mean like things are gonna yeah. be very different and and i think that it's gonna fluctuate um it's gonna there's gonna be highs and there's gonna be lows like beaches might be closed again boat ramps might be closed again they might reopen allow uh people to get out recreationally they might see a lot of pressure see cases spike in an area and then decide to retract it back um that's my opinion i mean are you kind of preparing yourself for that Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm preferring for the long term and like you know changes in uh, regulation uh, as we go on. Um, and shelter in place actually, uh, uh, I truly believe in shelter in place uh, was actually working because, uh, uh, like I said, like early April to mid April, we were transporting patients from one hospital to the other because so that one hospital didn't get overwhelmed with the COVID patients. You know yeah. they have limited about you know isolation rooms and limited resources of you know, ventilators. So. You know, we were driving pe- patients between hospitals, so everybody's like even evening out, spreading out. Yeah, point, yeah. So yeah, at some point it doesn't. I mean, it, it, you go beyond. Oh, I don't know. Do you go beyond your health coverage? Per, like, if I'm not a Kaiser person, are you sending me to Kaiser just to keep me alive? Is not it quite just, yet. Oh, not there. Yet. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> the, the almighty dollar is still in charge then. So we're we're yeah. not a we're not a socialized healthcare quite yet. So, no. <laughs> well, well, I just want to let you know that uh, a lot of people in the comments are saying what's up and thank you so much for yeah. your service. Up to 114 people now. We got nice, nice, nice. Nice. Yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know who who our guest is, this is uh, Moo Lee of Moo Outdoors. He's a uh, kayak channel in the Bay Area, and uh, he definitely represents the kayak scene, but. For today's, uh, you know, for today's uh, all intents and purposes, he's representing the medical first responders. Mu is a uh, EMS. Is that the general kind of term? Yeah, uh, yeah, emergency okay. medical services. Yeah, yeah. Twenty year background, and he's letting us know that the COVID situation is very real. We've reached a point where we're either at peak or going beyond peak, where the healthcare system is finally in a position to absorb like the amount of cases we're getting. He acknowledges we're in phase two, but phase two is like super gray, it could be forever. And I'm seeing somebody who's saying that they're um, in the medical neuro kind of side of things. And his estimate is that we're not going to see any real progress for at least a year. And I kind of agree with that. I mean, this is historic, it's unprecedented. It sucks, of course it sucks, people are dying. Um, You know, on a lighter note, like how does it affect fishing? Um, It's gonna affect it for for the long term, in my opinion, Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so Moo, you haven't been fishing. Um, now that we are in phase two and are allowed to go outside, is Moo Moo Outdoors going to be Moo Moo Outdoors anytime soon? I know you've been on hiatus for a while. Yes, I will be going out tomorrow. Whoa, yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> so the first, the first uh, time that you're going to be out in what, like a couple months at least? I think. Um, since late March. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hey, I've been, I've been appreciating the Moo Moo review indoors. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? On my side, personally speaking, my Amazon page has, has seen a spike in traffic. So thank you guys for, you know, doing some um, retail therapy while you're stuck inside. And so <laughs> if you guys want any, you know, real on the water, um, ex, uh, you know, um, reviews of products that can keep you safe, uh, check out Moose Page, Moose Outdoors. Not only will they show you uh, how you can stay safe, but how to catch fish from a kayak, 
uh, he is here. The rest of us are down here trying to catch oh, up. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I mean, like, if, if my if my mic was as good as his mic, and if my kayak skills were as good as his kayak skills, <laughs> it, 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 I'd be so happy. <laughs> I'm I'm still trying to catch up to Adam right now. <laughs> I always I always wonder: Are you sponsored yeah. to any kayak um, company? Um, no, I'm not sponsored by by any kayak company because. Uh, I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to because I want to try out different different brands all the time. You know, I I don't know if you notice. You know, I go on Old Town, Native, Hobby. You know, I all know. different kind of them. Yeah. So if you are sponsored by one kayak company, you okay. are almost requisitely have to use that. You know, brand. So I like to Send use. Me the you know, info so that maybe they can sponsor me or kayak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, June's always looking for a, a free way in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not cheap. It's not, no. not cheap. No. It's not cheap, but on the long term, it's not expensive either. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to use it probably just once a month. <laughs> if you compare it to a boat, I mean, boat is like up here and kayak is like below the ground. So think of it that way. At least that's the way I think of it at least. <laughs> All right, kayak company that watching this. <laughs> Saran2626 says, Mumu, you should show Adam how not to get hit by a boat. How do you not get hit by a boat, Moo? <laughs> it's just a bad luck. I mean, uh, he, Adam actually did a really good job, like, you know, pedaling away from the boat, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? That that situational awareness um, saved his life. Because if you watch that video really yeah. close, like, he has about three or four kicks in before he gets nailed on the back, right? So let's say those three or four kicks gave him like four or five feet of movement in the water. It's the difference between him getting hit like T-bone head on into his body versus the, the, the back exactly. of the kayak. So I'm actually, so, working, uh, I don't want to spoil too many surprises, but I'm actually working on a, like a uh, lessons learned video coming up on my channel. And, and one of the, one of the lessons is just to be aware of like your surroundings. So, yeah, um, and, you know, and not even just for fit, like that'll help you in fishing. Um, you know, you catch more fish and it'll, you know, like you said, could save your life. So, okay, yeah. move. If I'm buying a kayak, what would you suggest? <laughs> I think I already know what you like. Oh. <laughs> wow. How, how, uh, <laughs> what? Look, for the viewer's sake. <laughs> yeah. For, if you, if, if you got to pick one brand to represent Moo, what's it going to be? You got to yeah. pick one. Ah. Uh... Oh no, <laughs> that's that's a tough question. That's really tough question. Um, <laughs> uh, is, head, is Headwaters going to kick you off their team or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to sponsor them. Come on, so, come on. So you guys know that I fish out of a Hobie Revolution thirteen. Yeah. Um, the only reason I like the Revo is because it's efficient and it's fast and it's yeah. portable, and no other brand makes that type of a model. If yeah. Native made something like that, I might jump over to Native. If Old Town made something like that, I might jump over to Old Town. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so for the 124 people watching, if somebody is a representative of those companies, Move Outdoors, <laughs> he's putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I think I told you, I, or maybe you caught it earlier, we're, we're giving out um, prizes throughout the show. Not prizes, but this is, um, yeah, prizes for the fundraiser that, that I had, um, you know, that I was throwing together to support my um, cousin's daycare center. So if you don't mind sticking around, I'd love to give another way, another uh, prize away uh, while you're in the room. All right. Cool. Sure. All right. Let's do it. Adam, please right. share your screen and pick us another number. And here we go. Pride and again, and, and again, this is another CSA uh, beanie. Thanks to the CSA boys and sticker actually. Um, and two lucky craft lures never before seen. This is a sexy smelts and a cherry glow sardine, two unreleased colors by lucky craft exclusive to the boys at CSA and they get to do what they want, include, including giving it away to, uh, causes like this. So Adam, feel right. free to pick a number. Go ahead. Number two is, oh, sorry. Oh, here we go. 291. 291, 291. Let's see who 291 is. 291, hopefully you're in the chat so you can see if you actually won something. That's a big number. 291, 291. And that is, oh, this is awesome. Okay, this is going to 
uh, Mr. Mark. That is actually a teacher at the daycare. One of the subs donated a ton of money and said, I don't want to be in it. I want you to give it to one of the daycare um, teachers that likes the fish. Nice. I asked my cousin, uh, hey, if you could uh, point at somebody that fishes, she's like, before you say anything, it's Mr. Mark. He follows you. He follows everybody. He loves fishing. Um, so I volunteer his name. So Mr. Mark, congratulations. And hopefully the money that we raised uh, goes towards um, helping you and your fam out. So Mr. Mark, the winner hey, of the Cisse Beanie and the Two Lucky Crafts. With that Lucky Craft. Say again? I said, Mr. Mark, I want to see you on the beach with that Lucky Craft. That's right, Mr. Mark. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to represent. And uh, yeah, don't don't sell it. These are <laughs> these are actually pretty. They're a hot commodity in SoCal, and I'm sure they will be up north. So thank you, uh, thanks Adam for that. Appreciate it. And uh, Moo, you've been great, man. I, I don't want to like boot you off or anything. Uh, you've been. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're kind of have a, 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 a packed show today so i definitely want to um you know thank you for your time and thank you for for your background uh and sharing your background and um yeah i can't i can't wait to see you on the water it's been a while since we fished together i know we haven't fished together so that, that's because you that's come cause on you don't june have a kayak <laughs> i don't have a kayak that's right <laughs> hey thank you guys for having me yeah uh, yeah i really appreciate it Moo. um Again, guys, uh, if there's any takeaway, if there's any lessons learned from, from Moo uh, swinging by the shelter show, it's that um, COVID is very real. Um, it's going to be with us for a while. And uh, Moo, Moo, what's the best thing you can do to keep um, transfer of this bug uh, at a minimum? I mean, we're going to be, I'm, the weather is great. We're going to be inspired to go out. We're going to be inspired to do things we probably shouldn't be doing. What's the best way to minimize exposure? Um, are you talking about as far as the kayak fishermen or fishermen in general or just life in general? Uh, life in general. Okay. Uh, when you go to the grocery store, wear mask and gloves. This and gloves. That's gonna, okay. Yeah, and gloves. And then that's going to be the biggest uh, uh, place you could contract the virus. Okay. I think. Yeah. So, so when by glove, like a lot of people are wearing like these designer masks that a lot of people are getting creative with their oh, masks. Oh, whatever mask you guys have, yeah. Okay, matter. whatever mask. What about mm -hmm. gloves? Like, should we should we be wearing disposable gloves that we throw away yeah. as soon as we get no, home? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anything. Okay. Uh, it could be cloth. It could be like, you know, leather gloves, you know. Should we be sanitizing them like every day just to make sure? If oh, yeah. Yeah. It? After, okay. After, after, usually what I do is when I go to grocery store, I wear a mask. I wear my glove. And uh, when I'm done, sh done with shopping, I take off my gloves before I get into the car, load yeah. everything up, and then send my then sign my hands. Yeah. Okay. And then when I go home, I take off my clothes and wash it. Wow! Every time, every day. Every so day. You get home. Well, I only go shopping maybe one time a week. Okay. Or once in two weeks. So. Yeah. Have you, have you bought fish? No, I have still have, have some. Okay. Stock. Okay, in, good. In the so I, I was about Adam to, is here. I was, a, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to unfriend you and unsubscribe if you bought fish, because. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but actually, um, yeah, I don't want to say if I bought fish or not because <laughs> I haven't been fishing either. So you can subscribe to me too. <laughs> Mulu, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Um, for anyone um, wondering who this guy is, if you're joining late, this is Muli of Moo Outdoors. Also, 20-year veteran in the EMS scene, giving us the real boots on the ground, um, you know, story of, of what's really happening out there. So, Moo, really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Tight lines, bro. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, yeah. man. Luck Bye, tomorrow. Moo. Bye. See you later, man. Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Man, that was awesome. Really. Yeah. Hey, I got to get that. I got to get that mic. Okay, yeah, that man. mic is cool. That's a good mic, man. Oh, anybody in the uh, chat, um, we, we see your chats. I know you guys are asking me uh, a lot of questions. Um, we're, we're just kind of flying through things because we have a, a, probably the biggest shelter show that we've ever had, just just packed with people today. So Dude, we um, have 136 now. 137. 37, yeah. That's a record. That's yeah. a record. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We're kind of ignoring the people that make this possible the sub so let's check over the chats if you guys see any chats that you want to uh, bring up and answer feel free yeah let's see i saw a lot of questions for Moo. so Moo, if you're still listening everyone appreciates all your work yeah and uh, they're, they're excited to see you get back on the water yeah i love Moo's format very simple not flashy he shows you how to get yeah. things done and i learn a lot from watching his videos and he keeps yeah. things super simple like i don't know how to do that yet 
I drink too much every day. <laughs> yeah, we should get moved back on someday to talk fishing because he re- he's he's good kayak fisherman, and I, I I've learned a lot from his channel. And if you guys haven't seen him, I I recommend it for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, before we move on to our next guest, uh, June, how yes. you doing, man? I'm good. doing great. I've I've been seeing your videos too. You've been you've been on a roll also. Yeah, yeah. I'm posting. I I, I I'm I'm fishing. I'm fishing. <laughs> like what uh like what Moose said, you know, you just gotta have to keep your keep you safe, you know, keep yeah. your six feet distance. And if, if I see people on the beach, there's a lot of people. If there's a lot of people on the beach, I would not go. Yeah, I'll just yeah. Go back home. How but I've been catching. I've been catching. How close have you gotten to a Kalisa Grand Slam? I haven't actually tried it. Uh, <laughs> I was planning today, but I uh, had to finish my son's homework. So, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so I mean, what I meant is helping my son to finish his own life. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't get a chance to go out. Well, I was planning to try that oh, um, dark matter. So yeah. Dark yeah. Matter. <laughs> yeah, I think you're gonna like it too. All mm-hmm. right, well, I think it's time for our next guest. Um, let's see. How many prizes do we have left to give away? Like six or something? Before we do that, before we let's give away the last CSA beanie and the last set of Lucky Crafts for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about. Well, you should have been there for the fundraiser. Somebody right now is going to win a CSA beanie and two unreleased Lucky Craft colors, the Sexy Smelts and the Cherry Glow Sardine. Check it out. Look at that. So Adam, please let me know who's going to win the last CSA and double Lucky Craft Have giveaway. Lucky Crafts and some straight bass in their future. 34. Number 34. All right, number 34. Who you be? Who you be? 34. 34 is Paul Hoshi Nagamoto. Paul Hoshi Nagamoto. Oh, sounds like an Italian guy. I think it's... uh. No, I think that's Japanese. Hey, Japanese. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I thought... <laughs> Keep up, everyone. Paul, uh, uh, <laughs> Paul Soprano, congrats, man. <laughs> hope, hope there's some fish in your feature. <laughs> All right. So, again, we are giving away stuff uh, for the fundraiser throughout the show. And uh, really appreciate you guys that, that contributed. For everyone that didn't, I understand. Times are tough. I'll just assume that you saw my uh, offer, uh, <laughs> the fundraiser, but you had uh, your money better uh, partitioned elsewhere. So without further ado, I know you guys have been waiting to see this guy. We have 134 people. Our record is 126. So that's eight more than um, Taku. So man, he moves the needle. He brought in eight more people. <laughs> 136 <laughs> people watching. Can anybody guess who it is? Can anybody guess who it is? We actually promoted this for the first time. But I wonder if you guys, uh, I wonder if you guys, if anyone just like stumbling upon this and you guys don't know, I wonder who it is. Who could it be? Who could it be? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know who this guy is. Hey. Yo. Hey. Yo. Hey. Look at Whoa, that. What's up, guys? Yo. Well, everyone, turn your bass up and Matt, just say <laughs> something as low as you can. I want to see everyone's head just explode. <laughs> is that too loud? No, no. Maybe too loud. That's, no, that's good. Yeah, right there, right there is perfect. What's up, dude? Okay. How you guys that, doing, man? Good. Dude. Now, now that is a mic. I'm just like, we were just getting blown away by our guests and their mic quality. I know. Our mic is like, wait, where is it? <laughs> right there. I know. I was trying to start a podcast myself right before this shelter in place started too. So, like, coincidentally, we both are on the same podcast idea. Wow. So I got this whole little studio set up. I got mics all around me. So what's stopping you, podcast. bro? So what's stopping you? I want to do it all in person. I want to do it all in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean like um, actually like record it legit and then package it like a like a legit podcast? You mean? I think so. Yeah, but still unedited. But yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, I, yeah. Just coincidentally, um, I brought that idea up of a like Joe Rogan fishing ripoff show, multi camera guests um you know nice background but then you start doing the logistics and you realize oh shit, this is like a huge endeavor not only to record it but to edit it to sit through you know a couple hours of, of uh content and then extract it and post it and so um 
shelter in place happened, legally we weren't allowed to be in the same room. And so we figured out a way to get ourselves on YouTube. So thanks for showing up, man. Really appreciate it. You're one of the OGs, if not the OG of the Bay Area, at least. What's up, yeah. man? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I you post, I posted, I'm doing good. How you doing, Adam? I'm doing great. I just need a haircut, but other than that, we're good. <laughs> and good, uh, yeah, congrats on full time YouTube, Adam. Thanks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we'll get to that because uh, you're kind of like where everyone wants to be, and you're where I think a lot of people think they can be as far as like Adam and, and jumping into it full time. Um, for everyone wondering what is going on with Adam's head, he got <laughs> hit by another boat and he's wearing a helmet to keep everything together. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> uh, so, so Matt, yeah, uh, I, I posted a picture promoting um, the, this pod or the shelter show because one, it's like the first time somebody said, yeah, I'll be there for sure. So you can promote it. So thank you for that. I never promote because yeah. I never know if someone's going to show up. This is a basement show by, you know, after all. Um, but then um, two, I posted that picture just to kind of give people context for how long, um, you know, at least you, me and June have been posting stuff on YouTube. That picture goes back to 2016, but you've actually been at it a little longer than that. Like, I think, I think your first dated videos were from like early 2015, maybe 2014, something like that. I think my first video was December 2014. So yeah, early okay. 2015. I think same time as June. Me and June started like right there, yeah. same time. Similar. I think uh, Matt's just uh, six months earlier. Yeah, and then I, because I, 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 I was watching his videos too. <laughs> yeah, I started watching yours too. Yep. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there, there are only a few guys that kind of um, proceed uh, at, at least you, um, Rudy, and I think Stello415, Steve, right? Stello, think, yeah. Yeah, they're the two that I can- Sharkman, right? That. Sharkman HD? Sharkman HD, yeah. yeah. He actually used to have a, his, his original channel was called Sharkman, and then he went from like 480 to like, I don't know, 720, and he called himself Sharkman HD. He's an OG also, yeah. But um, here, I just wanted to show that picture to, to everyone. So they, oh, let's see if it, nope. let's see if it reads, no. Mm. Okay, I don't think it's gonna happen. Well, everyone go to my Instagram at Ishwasvish so you can check it out. But really, I mean, it's like almost like four or five years in the making. Um, really, yeah. I think at least the three of us have been there from the beginning. And so, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to ask you like, okay, so no one gets into YouTubing, at least back then. You know, back then YouTube was like a lot of DIYs. I don't think everyone was using it as a, um, as a career, right? People were just posting instructional videos, you see music videos. I mean, you saw people starting to take it seriously like uh, five, six years ago. Um, but no one, I don't think at the time, really had an outdoor kind of lifestyle, um, you know, video series or channel. And so what kind of made you post your first fishing video to YouTube of all places? Uh, I, well, I've always wanted to kind of make videos for a while. I actually have an old YouTube channel that I started kind of vlogging. Those videos are so bad, but they're, those are from like <laughs> eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. Oh, wow. So you had practice of filming yourself before fishing? Just like a little you bit. Yeah. Really bad ones though. Really, <laughs> really bad. And even my original, my, my first ones from 2014, they're pretty bad too. Is that, but, is that, is that channel still alive or did you throw it in the dumpster fire? It's out there. It's out there somewhere, somewhere. Someone okay. could find it. What's it was, the name of the channel? I'm not gonna say. Don't, but, don't give the name. I want people to try to find his original <laughs> <laughs> channel. Well, it, they could they could find it. It was my goal then was to run. So I knew to have a successful YouTube channel, you had to do something big, or at least that's yeah. what I thought. So my goal back then was to uh, train myself to run the mile and do it in a world record time, which is like some crazy crazy thing. I was gonna document that process. Right. Uh, yeah. Dan, Daniel, he philosophy D. He was helping me film that too. Wow. It didn't go as planned. I realized it was way harder than I thought to get a world record mile time. <laughs> so I think I, the world I, record I, is like under two I, minutes, right? Did you have a I, shot? I think three minutes, something. I think my, my time at that time was five twenty three. Haven't, you know, didn't train. But dude, no, it's, it's like one fifty nine now. There's a guy that did it. No um, way. Yeah. Uh, Mile. That's can... that's a that's a marathon. I think he did it in sub two hours. I'm gonna find it. I'm pretty sure that it's a it's a Ken, One, uh, no. Kenyan. It's an African runner, and he did it uh, with a team so he could draft them. And I think he got in at like 159, like 56 or something, like just under the two minute mark. Um, but right. I'll 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 find it and I'll send you a, a link. But uh, 
so yeah, you, you brought up philosophy D. If anyone doesn't know philosophy or Daniel and Matt's are actually what friends since high school or before high school? Yeah, high school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so a lot of it's, it's amazing how like a lot of Bay Area guys, um, you know, found themselves on YouTube fishing. I mean, did you ever see yourself like having a fishing internet career? No. I mean, no one never. Like in career no. day in high school, you never check that box. Right. <laughs> no for sure no yeah me and daniel we, we used to go striper fishing at the cliff house all the time and that was when i was using my big five rods my yeah. rod and that was your video rods. first video right with daniel is that with daniel like when you limit all of you guys limit oh that was yeah, that, that costco yeah. what do you call it costco bucket <laughs> was that, yeah, that was that, uh, i think that was the home depot bucket or i don't know i forgot which one that was but yeah that was one of the first <laughs> It all started with crabbing, though. Crab snaring. Crabbing, crabbing, yeah. Those were the first videos. And Rudy, I think his screen name on YouTube is Rudy, a.k.a. Hal, but he was like one of the inspirations for me to start. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I found um, you. I think you were the first Bay Area YouTuber that I found um, because I was looking on information on how to make crab snares because I think I saw somebody doing it at the Pacific Pier. I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know you could catch crabs that way. And yeah, uh, yeah, and I don't think you, I don't think they were being sold in stores or at least like not in the big box stores that I was used to. And so I had to make my own. And so at the time, and like today, especially today, you go to YouTube to find um, information on how to use just about for everything. Right. And so that's yeah. how I found your channel. And then I think um, once you find match channel, you start getting introduced to like a lot of fishing Bay area fishing channels, um, especially back then. I think I might've found June's channel as a recommendation because of me um, clicking on one of your videos. And so, yeah, I mean, for me, at least you're like the, the start for um, my kind of, uh, you know, feet first dive into the Bay Area fishing scene, at least. And, and here we are. Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy run. Um, so yeah, okay, so wind, me, wind back. You, you post your first video to YouTube or your, your first fishing video. Um, did it get traction right away? Like, what, did it take off like you wanted or did you just kind of putting up, put it up with like your fingers crossed? Not yeah, knowing. just putting it up with my fingers crossed, not telling any friends or anything like that, just putting it out there and seeing what would happen. Yeah. Just thinking that it would go viral, like most people probably think when they put out their first video. Of it's going to get 10,000 views. Yeah. But everyone you got like, yeah. yep. got like 10 views in, in, in a week. And probably I think, yeah, I all think of them was catch and cook with the... Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's how it all started to blow up. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you started posting your, your first videos and I think it was that first catch and cook where I think you were catching cooking perch. Was it like, um, I think it was on a cliff, uh, in San Francisco, yeah. obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one. It yeah. wasn't named catch and cook at that time. It was just going out and cooking it. But I think the yeah. title is important for YouTube, but change that a question really quick. Did you, did you originate the idea of catch and cook or did you get that from someone else? No, I think I may have done that perch one first, mm -hmm. but the name Catch and Cook, I don't know. It wasn't me. Yeah. But yeah. Which idea? The whole idea could have started. Yeah. Yeah. Catch and Cook is like synonymous with um, like, I don't know, fishing videos or outdoor lifestyle videos now. Uh, yeah, but fishing you never, you, yeah. You never think like, oh, I had to start somewhere. And you were posting videos before there was such a thing as catch and cook. Just really quick, I'm seeing everybody in the comments. A lot of people are asking questions to you, Matt, and we'll get to them, uh, you know, um, here and there throughout the throughout the video or throughout the shelter show. Uh, but I, I, I really want to know, okay, so your first catch and cook video takes off, but probably, you probably didn't have the traction yet to, to um, sustain what would now become a, a career, right? And so uh, you're, you're posting videos, you're seeing um, the growth happening on the channel, but it's not like really skyrocketing, right? Um, when I first found you, I think you were at like maybe 1100 subs uh, subscribers, which at the time was like, was like, wow, how can you command like a thousand people, 1100 people to the point where they wanna watch um, you regularly, like hitting a subscribe button was like so new to me. I actually didn't subscribe to the first, the first YouTube, channel I ever subscribed to was one on one real fishing and then I think I started realizing oh this is fun like I enjoy watching these internet videos just as much as I do tv I'll start watching more people and then I went back to the local guys and started subscribing to you uh, June and the other guys and so that's how it started for me and so you get enough people and you start realizing that wow I'm getting enough eyeballs I'm generating enough ad revenue that whatever my real gig was at the time right maybe 
I can like replace it with with revenue from this. So you're growing to a point where you're starting to see it being a, a real, you know, possible career. At what point did you like just go all in and say, I think I can do this like full time? Like, was it a video? Was it like an aha moment? Um, well, I don't hard, That's hard to say. I, I had a lot of savings uh, before I did YouTube. I was working six days a week and saving a lot. I, I found a place that my rent wasn't too expensive. So I was just saving a lot, just getting a little cushion. Yeah. But uh, probably when I had like 20 to 40,000 subscribers, somewhere around that range, I posted this catch and cook eel video. Yes. I wanted to bring that up. And uh, so at that time I posted it and it was doing, doing normal, not that great, but I went on this camping trip, which is now catch cooking camp two, I think. Yeah. But there's no reception where I was camping and I was out there for three days, no reception or anything like that. Yeah. So finally, when I was done with that trip, I was on the road and I got into some reception and my phone just started going crazy going crazy. I was getting 10,000 views an hour on this wow. video, video and that was yeah. just astronomical compared to any other video before that. Yeah. yeah. So, some back, so, so some backstory. So at that time, um, you, me, June, and a few of the original more than fishing kind of, um, you know, like event crew members, we were all on the same, um, Facebook messenger chat when you posted that video. It's the first time in my, like whole YouTube kind of um, tenure, I guess. Um, I had seen a local guy be able to hit a viral video where you saw growth in the tens of, and then the hundreds of thousands. And so I remember seeing um, in real time almost and talking with the guys and chatting and saying, wow, look, Mats, I think you're like, you're the first guy to, to really go viral with a Bay Area fishing video. Because at the time there were other like, like Black Tip H, he's been around forever. Um, One Rod, the Guggen Squad, they were starting to kind of find a, a foothold in the YouTube fishing industry. But I think that video was like the first, I remember it really clearly is the first time I had seen a video go really quickly to 100, then 200, then 300, then 400,000 uh, views. And then you start doing the math and you're like, wow, you know, if you can do this at a regular clip, this is more than a career. This is something that could like, you know, set you up for, for, for a long time, man. So, I mean, you know, there's definitely like a measure of success if you can reach that um, once and then do it again. And uh, yeah, no, I, I remember that video as a turning point. And then I also remember uh, a video where you gave away like a ton of stuff. And I think it was your announcement that you were gonna start taking this uh, YouTube career like seriously. I, and I think it was like around 60,000 subs or something like that. I think yeah, I had a 60,000 sub giveaway at that time. Yeah, that's what it was. And yeah, I mean, and like, you know, you see like Taku come up and you see him, you know, yeah. grow like super fast. Um, yes. It's definitely like a viable thing if you have uh, a way of packaging a story and then putting it out for people to consume. And I, I want to ask you like your, your, your true opinion of this. What makes your videos different than other guys that try to film similar content? Because I mean, there's, you know, nowadays there's a million channels and there's people doing all kinds of catching cooks. People are putting butter on everything. Thanks to you. Like, what, what do you think makes your channel different? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know for sure. That's actually a question I was going to ask you. But <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I know it's a lot harder nowadays. I mean, there's so many people trying to do YouTube that it's harder to gain a foothold now. I was yeah. in the right place at the right time back then, where yeah, no one was doing it. So maybe that's why. Maybe I just got a strong start. But yeah, I think his uh, his personality, his voice, is is really like a type of person that. You know, you would listen, even though you don't see him, you would listen to his voice, like, a, you know, like a radio announcer type of person. So yeah. I guess it's funny. Yeah. Some people say like they'll watch the videos and to put them to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of funny. You know what? that every people, once in a while. People watch my real review videos to put them to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right on, bro. Yeah. You know what? Um, I agree. Okay, so th th this is my take if you're asking me. Well, Adam, do you have an input before I talk for five minutes? I want to hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, th th this is my evaluation. And, you know, I'll pat myself on the back. I feel like I have a good uh, barometer of, of what makes content good, right? Because I, I feel like maybe these guys can agree with me. But I feel like I can, like, call a good video when it's going to, yeah. before it goes viral. And I feel like I can um, anticipate what happens, right? So, um, 
mirror neurons. I think I've talked about this in the past. Everyone, does anyone know what that is? Mirror neurons. There are these parts of no. your brain that that fire in a response to seeing something, um, seeing somebody doing something, and it triggers a like response, right? Like if I see somebody eating and my mouth starts watering, I know it's a good video. If I see somebody doing something, they're calm, they're presenting something in a way that makes me feel the way I project them to feel, uh, I know they're doing a good job. And I think your videos do the best. So whether it be your personality, the symmetry of your face, your voice, the, the, the production <laughs> level, um, the fact that you can present information in a new fun way that's easy to digest and watch like, you know, uh, over and over, all those things kind of come together and make a video that I think people want to watch and not only watch, but watch all the way through, maybe come back to it, replay it. And all those things add up to the, you know, the grandmaster algorithm and really, you know, push you into the mainstream. And so I think that's what it is. I think you do the best job probably on YouTube, I would say, for, for, for this kind of outdoor lifestyle um, type of genre of uh, creating an experience that people not only want to watch, but can like put themselves in and want to be there with you, right? So I think, uh, I think, I think that's I, I why. Think Matt's, yeah, I think Matt's, even though, like for example, today you just built, you just started your channel. Nobody knows you. Even though you just started right now, I think you will be, boosting up i mean you will still your channel will still grow i think because of your content and because of the way you present things you know yeah, i think that's I feel, what makes you i feel like one thing from that, that separates your channel from others is i don't know you you just like you're well okay just speaking from like a fishing perspective because that's what i do i guess you know your, your editing is far beyond mine and you know the issue these guys would probably agree with me or but um but i say like one thing that would that would separate you is like you're you go on these like adventures and, and I feel like when we're watching the video, I, this is kind of like what Ish was saying, like, like, I feel like I'm on the adventure too. So, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's just my take. Yeah. I mean, when I try to make a video, I try not to do the same thing every time, even though a lot of them have been rock fishing for sure. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I, do, I only get inspired to go out there when I think of a, a good idea and a good adventure. Like it has to be a full story to me that yeah. I can present in a way. Yeah. yeah I think that's, that's your, that, that's you you do that really well it's like the whole story aspect which so yeah. you plan it before Thanks. you go out there like you have a script or you have an outline oh this time i'm gonna walk i'm gonna put my camera right here so that they can see yeah. my feet walking of course kind of kind of yeah. Kinda, yeah in some places but like remember the video that we went out to on that rock where we crossed that two by four over that i would not that forget that man <laughs> yeah that one I, was, was I, good almost, i knew that was gonna be good yeah june june that, said that's the most danger he's ever felt fishing <laughs> seriously man yeah. dude and this guy i'm telling you this guy he looks thin but man, <laughs> when he hikes oh my god i'm catching my breath i'm like what the heck is this guy doing? well he's, he's like so six, he's like six six his strides are like three yeah. times like he hours he can run a mile in like five minutes so of course he's gonna have that's good... what i'm saying i'm like yeah. dude, I thought these guys... trying to break the two minute mark for the mile <laughs> I know two minute mark, but there's a, I tore my Achilles tendon too. So I'm not going to be doing any hiking anytime soon. That's it. <laughs> I know. How is it? Oh, How's right. your Achilles tendon doing? Uh, it's good. It's all right. I can walk enough, enough to make video here and there, but can't run or jog or anything, but it's a year recovery and I'm on week on a month four right now. Man. Yeah. I mean, has it affected the way uh, you fish? Like, or the way you approach to building content, your injury. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Matt's was out for what, like four months, five months? Yeah, four, a, four months. Yeah, yeah, since December. Because of a basketball injury. And he um, had to take a break. He was in a wheelchair and, uh, well, a cast at least, right? And uh, crutches. Yeah. Crutches. So it, does that kind of, you know how, like, you know, when an athlete gets injured, um, they're definitely affected, like they're gun shy doing certain moves and stuff like the way you approach um, going out to these pretty rough, treacherous, frankly, like dangerous spots. Does it approach the way you think about going there? You kind of like, nah, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm kind of like that too. Like if I have a good idea, I'll go out wherever. Like I had the idea to go out into the, to the island overnight. Yeah. You see that yeah. subs? He's doing it for the subs. <laughs> I remember because I, I was talking to the mass. I was texting him like, Matt, let's go fishing. Um, 
bring me to something that I would not forget. Yeah, and, yep, that's what and it's said. like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dangerous is good. Oh yep. my god, I didn't expect Never. that. That's that kind of danger <laughs> that he was talking about. <laughs> Never underestimate. Yeah, you were down though. That was cool. That was a fun, really fun video. That one. Because the scariest thing there, there's no signal there. If one of us, like, or both of us. Yeah, and that board was just on the rocks, literally by an inch on both by sides. like an inch, yeah. And the board and was bowing a little too. bit. It yeah. too. That was kind of dumb, actually. <laughs> that's dumb. That's dumb. That that's the video where June um, ate a fish heart. Although the angle <laughs> that you don't really see it, you see it like I can like confirm. This. I he did, did eat he that. Did he did i did it right that's true you know he's he's filipino he'll eat anything i uh, i I trust in you june (laughs) all right matt so you're you're either are you at a million subs yet Uh, i think uh no not quite uh fifty thousand to go or something like that okay so you're definitely gonna get there uh you're definitely gonna get your is it the silver youtube play button or the gold one i don't know i think it's the gold i have the little silver one right now can we see it is it by you Oh, that's upstairs. No, I'm downstairs right now. Okay. When you get the gold one, is this kind of like a turning point for you? Are you going to change it up and try to go bigger and better? Or is it just kind of like, you know what, this, whatever I'm doing now is working. Gonna, gonna keep, keep, keep the YouTube grind. Yeah, no, I'm not going to change anything really. I don't know. It's just a number to me. It doesn't seem that yep. significant, honestly. Yeah. 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 No, I think a lot of people, they, they have like these um, goals. And then once they hit these certain goals, they kind of maybe do a little too much to, to, to tweak what's already working. And uh, yeah, I think, I think what you're doing now, well, definitely proofs in the pudding. I mean, you're, you're definitely the most successful, at least local YouTuber guy. And uh, you're definitely putting yourselves up there, at least with the, on the national stage, you know, that's a, that's a cool thing about YouTube. Like you don't need to be discovered by a talent agent, you know, servicing, like, you know, working as a waiter in a restaurant in LA, like, you can create a career and national recognition for yourself on this platform. And I think anyone that wants to try it, I mean, it's an open market and you can definitely jump in and do it. And Matt's is an example of somebody who did it. Maybe it worked out timing or maybe timing doesn't matter because his content is legit enough to, um, you know, grow a channel as big as it has gotten. So, yeah, and I think you have to be motivated to do it too. A lot of people oh, yeah. start off and they stop, but if you have yeah. a vision for it, so just what keep you, pushing through it. What, keep, what keeps you motivated to doing this thing? Uh, oh, I, lo- I love fishing, so that helps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making videos, it's really rewarding to get a finished product, put it out there, and see a positive response. But is yeah. there any person or something that motivates you at all, all, like to keep going? No, it's just the ideas. I think when I just thinking about a good, fun idea and sharing it and helping people learn how to be a better fisherman as far as as, as much as I can help yeah. spreading little tips and some stuff that I picked up through comments and stuff that that's good motivation. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's the butter boat situation, bro? Yeah. So there might be, so, so <laughs> it all started with the little inflatable that now you have ish. And <laughs> yep. you, June, and, yeah, June and I, we took that one out. You caught your first salmon with me, June. Remember that? I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I think you said Danny. I heard there, a so. lot of, tight jeans comment there man oh yeah i know and <laughs> yeah, that was so fun too though your first salmon but yeah so i sold that one and then i got the whaley which is the plastic similar but just won't pop and then i still have that and i bought a 17 foot arima sea chaser but that one doesn't fit in my garage so uh, right <laughs> after i bought that one so you bought a boat that didn't fit in your garage like did you know this going into it? Yeah, I was planning on just keeping it in front and moving it for street cleaning and stuff, but yeah, uh, yeah it's just no. a big, big, big hassle. So I bought yeah. another one yeah. to replace that one. So I'm in the process of selling that one, and then so, I'll have the new so one. So you on. have two boats now, parking <laughs> and worrying about parking it. <laughs> three, yeah, actually three. One's three. at my mom's house, one's in my garage, and one's on the street. But hopefully, that one on the street is out, out soon. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's uh like like uh like Adam said, casual flex, but okay. <laughs> for, for for everyone who's like just do in, li- do. in line to that's get on a does. charter, yeah. Matt Matt's is like complaining about the um, embarrassment of riches. He just has boats everywhere, <laughs> which is which is which is just awesome. Um, <laughs> how how's Daniel, man? I haven't seen him in a while. How's he doing? I haven't seen him in a while either. It's been a while since I've seen him, but it seems seems like he's doing good. Posting yeah. videos here and there, rock fishing and stuff. 
yeah no he went on is that have you been to that spot the the one that he um posted his last video on because that 360 no. camera makes it yeah. look like like i don't want to take credit away from him but i'm like that looks like really dangerous how much of it is the angle of the 360 camera versus it being like legit scary man well when you're out there alone it, it's it can be really dangerous especially on those yep. smooth rocks that are just a little bit damp they're so slippery especially yeah. if you have a little bit of algae growing so if you're yeah. out there it doesn't really matter how steep it is it's still pretty risky and there's no reception and you're a mile from shore yeah, you know, pretty hairy you know, spots. Let, let me tell you a funny story so when you and the day you and june went out on that um crazy rock fishing video you guys went into i guess i think you entered an area with no reception right um sunshine actually texted me and vlad oh, saying, yeah. oh, yeah. saying i don't know where june is is yeah, he alive is he with you guys or like what the fuck are you talking about sunshine <laughs> he's like she's like oh wait i think he's fishing with mats do you know where they're at i'm like oh i don't know and she goes um his last check-in point was here and she sent me a screenshot of a gps signal like somewhere <laughs> along the coast and i was like oh, this is a mad spot <laughs> oh yeah and then, and then and then i did a google maps and i was like oh that's way too far <laughs> yeah it's pretty now, far the question am i gonna do that again <laughs> yes hell yeah that's what I'm let's do that again but anyway Matt, i have a question for you if you are not youtubing right now if this is not your thing what, what are you really doing oh man before i was doing youtube uh i uh was doing delivery driving for i started a little delivery business so i was delivering flowers and delivering medical supplies so wow. I, I don't know I, I probably wouldn't do that i told myself if i can't do something that i'm happy with then i'll just be homeless until i find something <laughs> you uber too right i heard you did yeah you told me you, you did uber yeah yeah, that was a grind too. A little Uber at the start of the YouTube thing, just trying to get enough money for a drone. Wow. See, we call Danny. Uh, he's probably here in the in the chat here, but we call him the YouTuber Uber. We just learned today that Matt's is the OG YouTuber Uber. That's, Dude, that's... <laughs> this guy went so much in life. I'm telling you, I, I think he des he really deserved what he's in position right now because he really works so hard and his content. So yeah, yeah super lucky. Yeah. yeah yeah so okay again million is just a number uh it, you know we don't focus on those milestones but looking forward and i'm just kind of encapsulating what a lot of people a lot of people are asking the same question um do you ever plan to do like international more international fishing stuff like or just more travel in general i know um you know you, you're recovering uh you're kind of navigating the covid water so to speak let's say things clear up by end of the year and 2021 is a clean slate what are the big plans for your channel? If, if you could give us a heads up and let us in. I don't have too much plans for traveling other than like visiting friends like TJ and Jan in Alaska. They live up there now. Um, just, uh, I love it up and down the California coast, up to Oregon, Washington, just down to LA, you go for yellowtail, you go for tuna. Just, yeah. uh, we have so much stuff here, you know, Adam. So, yeah. I mean, I would love to go to like Montana, Colorado, go for trout, maybe try yeah. Florida. But yeah, I feel like I'm most inspired by still West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I think until you kind of, um, you know, until your channel blew up, I don't think people um, at least OK, by people, I mean, like publications and um, the tackle industry really appreciated how diverse West Coast uh, fishing is. So, you know, yeah, you know, certain states are known for like steelhead and salmon. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to think what's synonymous with like West Coast, but like the way you present it, I mean, it definitely is a fishery that was underserved and, you know, you definitely put it out there in a way that I think people are like, whoa, this is really cool. Like what's going on on the West Coast? Like, I mean, me, myself, like I always thought rock fishing was um, regulated to jumping on a charter. Like I didn't know you can catch them from shore. You know what I mean? Like um, the cool thing about YouTube is it's free to consume unless you have a YouTube Red account. And so it's really easy to be exposed to all new types of fishing. And you make ultimately, you know, people better fishermen. You put people um, onto new species and just allow them to enjoy this uh, passion and this hobby. I think more so than they could without, uh, you know, without your voice in the community. Um, let me ask you the tough question. You ready for this one? You're Go almost at, you're almost at a million subs how much of the size of your channel weighs on um your decision to go somewhere and do you have that in the back of your mind 
how much your influence could burn a spot if it's if it's like you know if you don't do enough to cover up your tracks because you know somebody starting out they they don't have any subscribers they put something up they probably don't think twice about putting something out there for people to see but if you're carrying an audience a built-in audience of a million people um how much does that weigh on you like to to keep spots as pristine as possible when you leave them um because you're trying to leverage those spot you know for 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 content right i'm gonna take a break <laughs> yeah i'm just kidding i'm just kidding because <laughs> the spot burning is the topic <laughs> yeah. well it's happened it's happened before like there's been some spots that i've gone to that have been super secluded and then now every time i go there's someone there so i feel like i'm part of that um now lately i try my best if i'm fishing at the ocean only film something that you can't no no landmarks you know I remember when I first started, I had no idea what spot burning was. And I posted a Google map image from my house to the fishing spot. Like, this is how you get there. No. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Perfect. I, I didn't know. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know, especially when they start. But I guess it's a real thing. June. Yeah. Seems like I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, don't Matt, care. So, Matt, 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 Matt so let me ask you, why is June the poster boy for spot burning? Like, the, like, like we, we joke about tons it. Tons of YouTubers there. That's yeah. burn spot, and then why always oh, me? What? Why is it? Why is it June? Someone's triggered. First, so first, first YouTuber to catch striped bass there, probably. Yeah. Ah, I, t I take that as a compliment, man. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, stri striper guys, striper guys are the saltiest of the bunch, in my opinion. And so I think if you impede on striper spots versus rockfish spots. Um, I think there's, mm, I don't know. I their don't their know, voice but... is like pretty loud. Oh no. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, spots, they're, they're, they're protective of it too. Everywhere you go. Yeah. Have you ever been threatened? Like online or out in the field? Like someone's come up to me like, look, bro, I know what you're trying to do, but uh, I don't want to see your face uh, around here. Hopefully my connection's all right. It's... Uh oh. Is there, is everyone... A little bit, but uh, you guys hear me still? Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, not really. There was one time when, okay, there was one time when I went abalone fishing, and then somebody wanted to to uh, to find out the spot, and I wouldn't tell him, and told me he wish I drowned stuff, but nothing, <laughs> nothing too crazy. Or they'll throw my all my gear <laughs> in the water if they see me out on the rocks. Oh, but but that's like an online threat. No one, uh, no one's ever, ever come happened up. in real life. No, no one's ever come up to you like they do to June and actually threaten them. <laughs> Seriously, man. No, not like June when he was posting that live video. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like oh, that. yeah, that yeah, one. June, Pacific I don't know if anybody knows. Yeah. The Pacific Pier? Yeah, yeah, just walking along, filming live, and somebody said they'll, they'll kill you. They'll kill me. That. And my well, latest video, too, I got threatened. Right? Too. Something like that. I don't know why. Yeah. Adam, do you get threatened ever? uh i do not not to that extent i do get like some here's, comments every once in a while but i feel like i don't get it all right here's what i'm gonna say okay this is why the, why you for june? the record for the why rec you june yeah for the what, record okay? what's up june so if for those who people that are really trying to threaten me I'm like that so maybe you know come up to me face to face and i'll give them five seconds five seconds just five seconds. <laughs> and then what? Well, what, happens at, what happens at the six second? Oh, that's it. It's game. Oh, <laughs> game. You heard that, guys. Game. Five over. seconds. <laughs> I give you five seconds sure. to. Seven, two, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Like, we, the Shelter Show, we, we don't promote violence. However, <laughs> however, we do promote self defense. So if you're salty uh, and you have the yeah. balls to put the keyboard down and see somebody uh, in, in real life, Hey, human to human, man to man. You know, if you have to voice a concern, it's a, it's America. But you have freedom of speech, yeah. but not freedom of consequence, buddy. So, just saying. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. Wait. So Max, th thanks for joining. Um. Oh. Adam, June, do you have any questions while I get uh, the I'll, next? I'll, I'm ready? gonna ask him a question. Go ahead. Um. Before we let him go. Um. As a YouTubers, uh, we all know that Max is one of the top YouTubers here, especially here in West Coast. And um, if you have one, uh, one, how do you say this? Advice to the upcoming YouTubers, like people that starting YouTubing, and how would you advise them to do their content? Like, 
put up the videos? Well, first of all, you have to love what you do and be okay sitting at a computer editing and uh, doing the hard work and going out fishing and catching fish. But uh, if you want to talk about like technical things, like you need to know a little bit of inside YouTube information. Like you got to be able to, uh, if some people search for you, you have to be able to come up on a search feature and you have to be able to be promoted by YouTube. So that starts with like a good thumbnail. So I, I talked to this insider YouTube person that, that works at YouTube and this is what they told me. Hopefully I can share this, but they said the main thing that you want to focus on as a YouTuber is the watch time. Most people know that already. So the longer somebody watches something, the more that it'll get promoted on YouTube. The second thing how that time, they- how, how much time do you spend on a thumbnail? Cause you have the best thumbnails, you and Taku. Uh, I don't know. I just, I think that's one of the things I think about the night before or the week before. Try to build it around that kind of and the content. So you have the watch time. So you got to make it interesting and have people watch it the whole way through. So I don't know, cut off like little little things. Sometimes when you're editing a video, you think it should stay in, but you probably should go. And sometimes you get emotionally attached to your footage and it's hard to make the cut, but sometimes you just got to cut it out. So make it watch time good. And then second is have a good thumbnail, make it clickable. And so what the guy was telling me that works at YouTube, he was like, the king is watch time. The queen is the click through. So first of all, focus on making people watch for a long time, yeah. making people watch consistently throughout. And you can look at your analytics and you can look at the audience retention here and there. And then if you see something where the retention isn't that good, see what it is and cut it out. Maybe you don't need it. And then after you get that good, then focus on um, the click through, which is the queen, he said. So it's the king of watch time and the queen of click through. Once you, if you get those two together, then you should be good in getting promoted on YouTube. So that's what I would say focus on. What makes you, because for sure you have videos that you scrap, you know, you didn't, you didn't sure. make it on the, on the YouTube. So what makes you scrap that video? If I, if I don't catch fish. <laughs> I think everybody does that too. Me too. Have, you, me ever, too. have you ever like filmed like you know a video and then got back edited it and then like once you're like maybe midway through your edit be like wow this isn't gonna make it and just scrap it all together uh, no usually i know before usually i know before but i mean that but sometimes i'll get home and it'll be a great video but my audio isn't working that doesn't happen as frequently anymore but little technical diff difficulties of a youtuber yeah for sure tell me about bad yeah. audio i know a lot about that I think for Matt, even though it's a it's a it's a scrap video, even though it's a, he posted it, he'll get a million views. No way, <laughs> for sure, no. So, man, this guy, I'm I'm I. Before I really, I think you were the you. I subscribed to you first. You're my first subscribe. I subscribed to you first. Oh, thank you too. That's the, that's the you're the first person, and then I subscribed to Stello and Sharkman. So those three, the you guys, three people that I watched. It's been a long time. Time yeah, flies. Too. It's been a long time. Oh, time look fly. who's back. Yeah. Sorry, guys, miss me. Bathroom break. <laughs> right, hold, on, hold on. Ah, there we go. Ah, hey, ah, speaking of. <laughs> Speaking of uh, good times, who wants to give something away? You guys ready? I'm ready. Adam, let's do it. We're giving away two Chinese reels. We got a, <laughs> we've got a Chinese reel. Chi Chinese reels, lightly used uh, Spartan. They don't make this anymore, but it's actually a pretty decent reel. I caught a big ass bat ray with it and some stuff in Hawaii. Actually. I lost something in Hawaii on it. And uh, this other mag reels, which is like a pretty decent cheap reel. So you got the both ends of the spectrum covered. So somebody's going to win these two reels, 6,000 and a 4,000 size. Um, not going to last as long as name brand, but hey, free is free. So give me a number, Adam. Let's see who won. And the winner is 85. 85. 85. Who is 85? Brr. 85. Oh, Adam, you're going to have to do it again. Sean Varosky won, but we said you can only win one actual tackle prize. Uh, he already won the Lucky Crafts. 
So give me another 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 number. Oh wait, sorry. Let me share. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and another winner is. Oh no, eighty four. Eighty four. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see if he's cut off there in my spreadsheet. Uh, no, actually, eighty four is the cutoff. Uh, Sean Varosky, again. You're gonna have to do it again. Okay. Well, <laughs> again. Do it again. We're doing it live. Four. Number four? Yep. Charles Coulter. Charles Coulter, you are the winner of two reels. Thanks for contributing, bro. I really appreciate it. And uh, for anyone that's watching now, um, again, if you are in the fundraiser, you will be eligible, even if you win some tackle, for the uh, grand prize giveaway, which is the charter with uh, all of us and uh, another YouTuber, I forgot his name, or the option of merch if you're not in the Bay Area and you can't make it. So, um, you know what? I'm feeling pretty, I'm feeling pretty generous right now. Uh, somebody is gonna win. Am I on camera still? Can you guys see me? Somebody's gonna win an Akuma Coldwater 453D. Ooh. Brand new, thanks to uh, that sub. The, the sub that uh, won the first uh, Lucky Craft, Sean, he sent me a bunch of stuff to give away. Um, he's like, hey, I want to contribute to the fundraiser. I like what you're doing. Um, so he sent me this brand new line counter, uh, Akuma. Matt, do you have this one? The cold water? I yeah, I used that one for salmon. Yep. Oh, Matt's can verify this is a legit reel. He put salmon it's on nice. it. It's a nice but, reel. Yeah. You use it too, Jim. Yeah. The 453. So look at that. All these people have experience with it. Adam, give me another number. Who's going to walk away with this thing? All right, here we go. 320. 320. Oh, somebody that donated late. Somebody that donated late. So late. Look at you squeezing in. 320. And our winner is... 320. Our winner is... Chris Hart. Thanks, Chris Hart. You just won an Akuma Coldwater 430. D. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Cool. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. We have two nice. more tackles, uh, tackle things to give away. That's going to be the Cast King uh, Fishing Tackle Backpack. Uh, it's really nice. It has like four uh, legit tackle boxes. And then the grand tackle prize winner, at least, will be a Shimano Spheros JDM 6000 HG uh, from Japan. Super nice reel. I think. Matt, I think you have a Spheros too. I think that's one of your OG reels. Yeah, I've got a Spheros SW5000. Yeah, that one's yeah. Nice. So, so this is the JDM 6000 version of that. See, I, I know people buy their equipment. <laughs> mm -hmm. It sticks in my head. So um, yeah, uh, you know what? Again, uh, let's shout out to the subs that are um, the reason why we're, we're gathered all here today. 212 people. That's a record for the Shelter Show. I understand that at least four people are here for Matt's. So for the other 200 and now nine, really appreciate you guys finding our way to our basement show. Uh, really appreciate it. Again, uh, I'm Ish with Fish. We've got Adam somewhere over here with the with the head trauma. We've got June, needs a haircut. And we've got um, Matt, AKA Mr. Dude, how, okay. I haven't mean to ask you this. Did you always think that butter was gonna be like your thing or were you like, well, shit, it's working. I'm just gonna run with it. Yeah, no, it was just a fluke. I never intentionally planned it. It just happened and people started commenting and I ran with it. <laughs> have you ever, okay, have you ever been close to a butter sponsorship? Because I mean, I don't see why a company isn't jumping on board the match train with the amount of exposure that you get. I mean, how can you not be like legit sponsored by a butter company yet? I haven't been reaching out to anyone, but I did come close to Clover, Sonoma Ooh. Farms Clover Company. Really? And they were close. They sent me some free butter coupons, but they didn't want to sponsor. Coupons. Them. Wow. They That's said they, they concentrate 20. mainly on uh, moms and kitchen. So <laughs> didn't want to sponsor a fisherman, I guess. I don't know. Jeez. That, that's that's so dumb okay so like the, whoever's in the marketing department like they don't understand their, they don't understand the audience and the exposure you can bring because everyone has a kitchen. Everyone cooks. So anyone watching is probably especially a Captain Cook episode. They're going to record that name brand the next time they go shopping the next time they want to fill that butter tray in their fridge huge mistake i mean oh <laughs> it'll happen maybe i'll have my own butter one day but question um i don't know you can answer this or no if you, it's up to you uh, what who is your biggest sponsor hmm. uh 
I don't know if I should say the name, but it's a security company. Just random security oh, okay. company. Was it? Uh, is it North? I, I saw that. Or the the VPN one? No, no. I mean, they're. I try not to do sponsors. I haven't. I don't think I've done any in two thousand and twenty. Even though I only made two videos, but yeah, I just I'm I'm trying to keep it more sponsor free. And if I do promote anything, it's mainly going to be my stuff or something that I really, really, really want to get behind. Yeah. Just want to keep it more ad free. Yeah. No, you, you definitely uh, as a YouTuber, you know, especially for somebody starting out. Um, once you start so getting so tempting, it's very yeah. tempting. Yeah, once you get offers, I mean, the, I, I get an offer a few times a week. Most of it's like no name stuff. I reject probably for every one thing I say yes to, I reject 20. You must see like 100 times that because of the size of your channel. So it is a, like a slippery slope to to navigate. But I think once you start going through a few, um, you start realizing what you can and can't get away with with the audience. Because the audience, they're the ones that are going to be the ultimate judge. And if you yeah. start early, I think, in crafting like trust with the audience and being very, very selective, you definitely can. So. Yeah, and if you do get any offers, don't sell yourself short. Always bid yeah. high because they're going to yeah. try to look while you. They're trying to save money, so you might as well try to get. Yeah, you know, have their marketing budget. Yeah, the, the value of uh, a YouTube YouTube exposure to me is like huge, right? And I mean, like if you can put like a, okay, imagine Matt films a video, right? You're a, a butter company. You, uh, what is the cost of getting um, a million impressions or, you know, the, the standard way? So, I don't know, ad time on TV, Facebook ads, um, YouTube ads, or giving somebody a small contract and giving them product to then feature in a video that, um, you know, has a, a life on the channel in perpetuity. So to me, there's a ton of value there. I think the industry is starting to figure out, well, they, they, they've long figured out the value of YouTube exposure. And so I think for any old school companies that are kind of behind the times, they should get on it because YouTube is where it's at. I mean, I think like my kids' generation, they don't watch TV at all. All they watch is like YouTube. Like they have YouTube time. They don't have television time. They have YouTube time. You have this generation that is growing up on YouTube. So when they enter those years where they have the purchasing power, they already do because they're asking me to buy them stuff. Um, they're looking at YouTube for guidance on what they want. YouTube is telling them what they want. So that's, uh, that's my opinion on that. So for anyone starting, if you're in a position to start looking at sponsorships or if people are offering you stuff, don't be lowballed. You know, you definitely have a value. And if they reject it, move on. There's somebody that's going to be right behind them, I think. Yeah, so, sure. so yeah. So yeah. So Matt, do you have any questions for us? We're kind of grilling you. Uh, any questions for us three? Uh, how are you doing, Adam, with the full-time YouTube? Three videos a week. That, that's uh, pretty... Uh, that's that's impressive. That's a grind right there. I'm grinding it out for sure. I will tell you, like this week, I've been on the water the last six days, every day. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's a grind. But I mean, I'm I'm enjoying it, and I, I like the I like the challenge of having to get three videos, like three quality videos. Like that that's that's why I, I kind of set that in, in the beginning. Which we'll see if I can keep so, it up been keeping it so so what happens when you can't do three what if you can only do one you don't catch fish you're gonna be all right with that it's uh, gonna happen maybe yeah, I, know. I, I know it's hopefully not at some point but um yeah i don't know i mean i guess i mean I have to be okay with it. if it happens it happens just but, have to yeah i have to deal with it right i mean if if i don't have content i'll just be out there the next day trying to get some but um so yeah that's, that's how, yeah. You know, fishing is never for sure so so yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's and Matt, tough. What is your uh, dream fishing uh, adventure or anything that you wanted to do in fishing? What is that one thing? Oh man, I don't know. I don't have one thing really that I want to do. I am starting a little tackle business oh. kind of thing. So I've got swivels and uh, jigs coming out soon and my own nice. custom swim baits, hopefully. So I'm going to try to provide those at a very competitive rate, probably less than any other competitors, big name competitors. So hopefully, you know, people can see that they can get affordable tackle. At, nice. So trying to do that. So how do you see That'd your- That'd be cool if I can build that. I'd like to focus on how, that. How, how do you see your channel in five years? 
10 million subs. Five subs. years? Oh, he needs to get that, that diamond I plaque. I don't have a five year, 10 year goal. No. I just keep doing what I'm doing. Just, I don't know. I don't know. It'll evolve in time. I don't think too much about the future. I just try to think about what video here. And then if there's any opportunities that come around, if I, I'm open to it. So you never know what will happen. Maybe write a book. I, I've written a few chapters in a book already. So I don't know. I really don't have any plans. Solid. Yeah. Right I remember it was a couple of years ago. You posted, I think it was on Instagram or maybe Facebook. Um, you asked the audience if, if I wrote a how to fish or fishing guidebook yeah. for the West Coast, would you guys buy it? And I remember there's a you know, very positive response. Um, so I know you teased that in the past. So it's good to hear you've made progress on it. Um, but yeah, you know, fishing tackle, it's, it's disposable product basically. And so you have repeat buyers and I think you've ingrained yourself uh, with the audience to, you know, put yourself on, put your name on product that I think people are willing to buy. So I think, I think anyone that's getting into fishing, if you establish some kind of exposure, um, I think fishing tackle is like a natural way to, to, to get into substantial, like, um, I don't want to say merchandise, but actual like product. I mean, anyone can start a merch line. Like you, you go to teespring.com in five minutes, you can like, you know, have a, your name on a t-shirt, but to create like tackle, I think that's, it's a big jump, I think, but if you do it right and do it well, I mean, it could be, it could be huge. So, so what, what are you going to call it? Like, yeah. I don't know, butter stuff or something. Probably not, probably not that like fisherman's life, like, know. like uh, a yeah. ter terminal match or something like that. Um, <laughs> so, Hey, want to bring on a guest? Like uh, <laughs> some of them, probably, probably not. Um, I just want to bring on a guest. Uh, again, we do have um, a, this is, uh, th this episode is in the spirit of the, the fundraiser giveaway. Uh, for anyone watching that doesn't know what I'm talking about, too bad. Uh, I'm giving stuff away to anyone that was part of the fundraiser. And uh, the four guys you see here are all part of it, but we are missing one guy. Does anyone know who that guy is? Anyone in the audience? Anyone? 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 No? Anybody? 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 It's Hello? already. Who yeah, is Hello? 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 <laughs> well, I don't know who it is. <laughs> Who's this guy? We all hey. we all gonna be be okay on that boat? Uh, we got two boats. We, we got two boats uh, oh, set up. Oh. Yeah. Okay, um, so you know <laughs> when I made when I made the plans in my head, um, I was like. Yeah, it'd be great to have like you know the the, the guys I, I came up with the the guys that are big name you know help spread the word uh, for this fundraiser. I'll admit I was thinking about it, I was like oh shit, can we fit this many <laughs> this amount of guys on on one boat? And I talked to Miguel. And he's like, um, oh don't worry, I think we can get uh, a second boat because like you, he has boat problems. He has two boats, uh, so I, I think we're good. Yeah. So uh, so so what up, Taku? I see you're there. I see you're on mute. The the other um, yo can you hear me Mike what's up Taku? Mike what's up? <laughs> what's up guys what's up it's funny it's funny because the hosts are the mics are fake and then our guests are all yeah. legit mic the guests are showing you guys up man <laughs> yeah we all have day, uh, he's in mood too I was like oh Dan he's got the mic <laughs> dude. You know what? Of of the of the three of you guys that had the the, the legit mic, Moo sounded pretty good. I don't know what he's found yeah. on him, but I was like, "What is Moo doing with the professional mic?" I'm like, "What's he doing in his off time?" I swear. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a podcast of his own. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So so um, I, I wanted to ask you, Taku, uh, really quick before we yeah. move on to the the next giveaway because we do have another giveaway. Um, you, I think more than maybe most of the local YouTubers were really kind of uh, sanctioned and handcuffed by the uh, shelter in place ordinance because you do live in the city. San Francisco had a pretty tight lockdown policy. Are yeah. you able now to get out and do your thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been uh, going out now. Past couple of days, I've been going out fishing. So because uh, they, San Francisco said that um, outdoor business can, you know, resume again. So I'm considered an outdoor business nice. outdoors in the yeah. name of, you know, outdoor chef life. Yeah. So, yeah. Were, uh, you, were you worried there for a second that things were going to go uh, like the, the laws were going to be so tight for a long time that you would kind of like be going backwards with the channel? Or... Yeah, no, I, no, I have been going backwards with the channel, like for sort of speak. Yeah. I've been oh, doing the, my balcony chef life, right. I've been on my <laughs> balcony just doing, just doing, trying to do, more informative cooking videos and like knife sharpening and that kind of stuff. 
And man, I'll tell you, I have to, I made four videos in one week and four videos get the same amount of four balcony videos gets the same <laughs> amount of views as one catch and cook. Wow. So, yeah. See the, the power of a well-constructed catch and cook. I mean, like, yeah. like I say that kind of lightly, but really, I mean, that's somebody's livelihood. That's multiple people's livelihood on this call. You know, if you, if you're counting, uh, what Mass can do, what, uh, Taku and Jocelyn can do, uh, not counting myself, June or Adam, cause my cat, like my cat, our catching cooks, they go backwards. I get less views for my catching cooks than I do traditional, um, Ish with fish vid, so uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm happy that things are uh, lightened up at least for for now because you don't know uh, what's going to happen. You know, again, like in talking to Moo, his outlook I think is very realistic. Um, we're going to be at this kind of phase two, whatever phase two is, for a while, and I think there's going to be ebbs and flows to it. There's going to be yeah. highs, you know, peaks and and valleys, and get it while you can i mean you know if you can legally go out and then, then definitely do it but I, I think i don't know i watch your balcony vids I, I think that there's enough there to sustain uh the tough times um matt i don't think i got a chance to ask you um yes you are coming off an injury and you're starting to post again were you worried at all when there was the really strict lockdown in place um because i think everyone knows you're also based in the city uh were you kind of like oh crap like how does this affect my my channel and what we're going to be doing this year uh not too much because at the time i was injured so i couldn't even go out yeah and uh by the time now it's being eased up a lot and i'm just getting healed so it's almost perfect timing for me yeah there's ever uh you yeah, know i'm not getting out there and thank god no one else is going out either <laughs> i know adam's probably like please everyone just stay injured stay home <laughs> let me catch my 20 pound halibuts left and right yeah like, you guys you guys probably didn't see me, but I'm, I make a cameo in his last halibut video. I was out there with him, uh, catching stuff, trying my best, but, um, yeah, it's like pretty, like it's pretty shitty watching him catch like his fourth 20 pound halibut. <laughs> like, yes, he's showing me the ropes. He's taking me to his, his productive areas, but I'm like, another one, this son of a bitch. <laughs> and he does it. And Adam just doing it. Like it's like, oh, I do it every day. No, big oh, deal, you know, yeah. oh, this is another, oh, you know, 20 pounds yeah that's right about there <laughs> oh totally <laughs> yeah yeah like bada bing bada boom uh, over but, my possession limit and i better the, give i better give some to ish <laughs> yeah and the, which, which, the Calissa, the Calissa slam i was like what, what is this bs dude it took <laughs> <laughs> i brought him into my spot and i asked him oh let's go fishing to my spot i'm i'm catching i'm killing him there we went there i got skunk he caught three <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I I will take I will take credit for for discovering Adam on a beach at uh, during uh, what was it the Sand Crab Classic? I think it was the 2017 one. And uh, you know what? Okay, it, it's not like I I saw him and I was like, oh yeah, let, let, let's go fishing. Like I saw him, I was like, hey, like your channel. He said the same thing, and then like off I went to to my other two friends. And uh, like I never thought I'd see him again. It's just like you see somebody on the beach, you say hi, and that's it. Um, if you guys are part of the sand crab classic or have ever gone, um, they do like a part of your ticket pays for a barbecue lunch. And, uh, I was with my friends, we were waiting for the results that they announced and the winners. And, uh, just like, just coincidentally, um, he walked behind my friend and, uh, he was like alone, I think, cause he's a loser. And I was like, I was like, Hey, you're that guy, right? He's like, Hey, he's like, Hey, what's up, man? And I was like, Hey, you want to sit with us? It doesn't look like you're with anyone. He's like, okay, sounds good. And so he sat down and we got to talking and I just had a feeling like, oh, this is a, this is a cool guy. And um, I don't know, I think we like maybe found each other in the parking lot again, just by happenstance. And I was like, hey, if you ever want to go fishing, let me know. And uh, the first time I went fishing with him, man, like for every like, you know, snag I was snagging, he was like catching fish. And you could, you know, when you're fishing with somebody, you can just tell they're a natural, like when June fishes, you can tell there's just a natural rhythm people have. And it really, it like correlates to catching fish. Like Adam totally has that. So, um, thank you. Ish. Yeah. So, so <laughs> short of like being able to cook and make sushi or make, you know, butter videos that get 2 million views, Adam can definitely put himself on fish and show you guys how to catch fish. So that's Adam's value there. <laughs> um, Hey, while we have you, uh, Taku, 
let's give something away. We have two more big items yeah. to give before we get to the uh, the grand prize here. This is a, again, donated by a sub. Hold on. Cheers to everybody saying cheers in the comments. Yeah, cheers, cheers everybody. Cheers, hey, cheers. Yeah, we'll get to your questions. Uh, a lot of you guys are asking great questions um, and we're totally ignoring you because uh, there's a lot going on. But this is a Cast King tackle bag and my background's not gonna wanna read it, but this thing is like legit. This thing's like a hundred bucks or something, but it comes with all these plain old like boxes and it, it goes into the bag. But this is a fishing specific bag. So it has like all kinds of cool stuff. Just look up Cast King uh, fishing tackle bag. You're gonna get it. It's probably gonna be the most expensive thing I ship. I'm not gonna have fun shipping all this stuff. Let me tell you guys, I'm gonna be standing in line at the post office because of this with my mask and gloves on, like like Moo suggested. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm doing it to, as my part of the fundraiser, so uh, I'm there for you guys. So uh, Adam, if you will do me the the honor of picking the winner of the Cast King tackle bag, the right. second to last uh, tackle prize in the fundraiser. Here we go. Thirty-three. 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 I feel like you picked thirty-three or thirty-four before. Yeah, we did do thirty-four actually. This yeah, time. you know what? Uh, that's Paul Hoshi Nagamato. He already won something. So Adam, give me another number. Here we go again. 341. Really? 340. Oh, that might be that Chris guy. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. 341. 341. That's that's 300, at least 341 name and values I had to type into a spreadsheet. So <laughs> a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that pulled this off. 341. That's going to be. Sal Ancantera Jr. Saul Ancantera Jr. So Saul, I don't think you want anything yet. Thanks, bro. You're getting a Cast King tackle bag courtesy of the fundraiser. So appreciate your uh, donation and uh, congratulations. And again, anybody that wins tackle, you're not eligible for more tackle, but you are eligible to be re-entered into the charter. So uh, if you didn't win anything tackle-wise, don't trip, guys. Um, oop, did I lose you guys? Don't don't no. don't trip because uh, you do have a chance to uh, win a spot on the uh, tourney. And speaking of, we have one more guest uh, as part of this uh, overall um, YouTube slam here <laughs> that we got going on. It's a party. It's a party, man. You know, I was a little nervous about bringing on this many people because you know, have you guys done any of those like Zoom cocktails with your friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It gets a little crazy once you like get past like the ten mark um but here let's uh let's, let's bring him on board this is uh our captain oh captain the guy helping us uh on the water the guy oh. that's like yeah the guy that's responsible frankly for um all of my pb rockfish um he's the guy that knows where the jurassic park fish are what's yep. up miguel i brought you on hopefully i didn't surprise you you're on mute and your camera's off but this guy is the guy um to to put us on fish and uh happy to have him how's that What's up, hey, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Yo. What's up, Yo. Taku? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Actually, Miguel been inviting me on his boat, but I keep... I'm sorry, Miguel. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'll, I'll... I don't think it's your we'll fault. It, it, it kind of goes like this. It's 9.30 at night. Hey, June, you want to go fishing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, He's the been running... wanting me to put it in his boat. Yeah. Yeah. The, the run and gun style, style invite. It, yeah, I've definitely been put in that position too by Miguel. <laughs> Ish had made it very clear, don't do it with him. Um, Look, man, I need I need two weeks. I need two weeks. Like Adam can do it, but who does that? <laughs> you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks everybody for uh for, for everyone on the call. Um, thanks for being part of this uh fundraiser giveaway again. Somebody's gonna win a spot to fish with all of us. And Max brought up a good point, Miguel. Uh. I, when I might have overcommitted uh, the amount of spots that we have on your Native Anglers 2 boat, um, I think we said that we can secure the first one too. Uh huh. Just like that. If, if, if we need it, we can get three boats. Um, it's, it's not a big deal. Look at that. Matt, you have boat problems. Miguel, you have boat solutions. Okay. Right. One, more, <laughs> one, more, one more giveaway nice. Uh, nice. before we move over to the charter. This is the um, JDM Shimano Spiros uh, 6000. Just want to get this out of the way uh, so we can just take a break and a breather. And frankly, get to the subs because they have lots of questions. We have 216 people watching now. I think we're at 222, so we're past some bedtimes, I think. So yeah. the last 
uh, tackle giveaway. This is a brand new from Japan, actually. A uh, company sent this to me from Japan, the Cirros, Cirros SW6000. Adam, who's walking away with some JDM candy? First number is 329. Is this a random generator? <laughs> There's like no numbers like between like the tens and the 300s, but I take your word for it. Uh, literally the first result on Google, so. 329. All right. I'll, I'll, let's see, 329. That is, oh, okay. So check this out. I think a mom donated on behalf of her kid. This is Connie Ruelas for, I think her son, Jesse. So Connie, thanks for donating. Your son, Jesse, gets a pretty badass uh, saltwater <laughs> reel. Awesome. Nice. Cool, cool. Thanks, guys. Nice. Right. That is a really good reel right there, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, in my opinion, it's probably the the best cheap sealed reel that you can buy at the moment um, till the new Gosa comes out. That's the ish with tackle voice right there. Um, yeah, so again, we're, we're, we're uh, past the, the, the merch uh, side of things. So thanks uh, and congrats to all the winners. Um, again, we see um, all you guys in the comments. Thanks for, for joining, of course. Um, if there are any questions that you want to ask any of us, now would be the time. So June, Adam, um, as my co-host, so feel free to grab a question and put it in front of that YouTuber. And Miguel too. Miguel's uh, yep. repping the, 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 the Kaplan scene. Hey, while, while, we, while Adam and June are looking at the, uh, the questions, um, Miguel, has, is Monterey open yet? It is not. Uh, Moss Landing, Monterey, and Santa Cruz are all closed to the public. As of right now, if you, for Santa Cruz, if you have a slip, if you have a um, commercial license, if you have a launch permit in Santa Cruz, you are allowed to launch your boat. Uh, Moss Landing and Monterey have not done any sort of soft opening. From what I understand, they will not open until the shelter in place is lifted, regardless wow. of the California opening um, um, in waves. So, okay. So, okay. So again, so, so for whoever does win, you know, we will host the charter. Uh, we do have to align everyone's schedules. We got to do make sure that we're doing it within the ordinances of uh, the Monterey area. So we will eventually get you out when... Who knows? I think it's a big question mark for anyone that wants to get out in those waters, but we'll, we'll figure it out and make it work for you. So, um, yeah. Here's Any a, questions? Yeah, here, here's one from Wind Capture. For, I'm, I'm assuming he's asking Taku and uh, Matts. He asked if, if either of you have ever gotten sick from a catch and cook. So we'll start with Matts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, uh, yeah. I did get sick from at least one. So, <laughs> uh, one, one time I went, I took a trip with, uh, uh, a couple people, Alex and Jacqueline, they, and we went up to Mendocino and had some uni, and we made, I don't know if it was the uni, though, but uh, I don't know. I think it was the uni, uh, like, uh, salsa dip kind of thing, and that night, I just threw up my guts. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, uni. I think uni did it for me. Dang. Did that oh, make the that video? Was like video, right? It was, it was Alex's video. Yeah, he made. I think he made a video of that, but not of me. Yeah, yeah, barfing. yeah. That was his video. I remember that. I, that I was bad. Watched that. Yeah. Oh man, what about you, Taku? Have you ever made yourself sick with your own catch and cook? Um, <laughs> not with anything I've po posted, but I have gotten, I have gotten um, sick with my own, my own little, you know, experiments. Oh, like cha um, channel Taku related channel related or just like um... yeah 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 channel related but it was before i had a youtube channel okay um i harvested some seaweed and then i left it out on my balcony to dry out but i put it in a little little tupperware i just left the lid open and i put it on my balcony and i just let the sun dry it right dry yeah. it out and then i forgot about it for a long time and it was just out there and i was like oh i, I went out on my balcony i was like oh i still have this I was like, oh, let me let me use this, you know, let, let me see if it's good. And then so I just steeped it in some water and, you know, made some broth out of it. And then I, I drank it and I was like, oh, yeah, it tastes like, you know, a seaweed broth. No big deal. And then the worst thing about that was that right after that, I was driving from San Francisco to L.A. in a in a ride share from Craigslist. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and I wasn't driving I, I was just the passenger, you know, I just, um, I used to do it all the time, just going up and down 
from San Francisco to LA, just taking ride shares off Craigslist. Man. And oh, great I man. Drank it right before I went on that this guy's car, just some random guy, right? And man, I, I met up with him at Walgreens. Uh, and then right before I like I I got in his car, I was like, I gotta go in, in Walgreens, like I'll be right back. And then yeah. He was like, who the did I pick ends. up? Who's this? Out guy? of both ends. And I was like, shoot, man, I gotta take <laughs> I'm about to drive down for like six and a half hours right now down to LA. And then yeah, but thank thankfully like <laughs> We stopped, I think, twice along the way, and then, yeah, both times I was like, I gotta, go. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, he 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 lucked out picking you from the Craigslist pile, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the only time I got sick, but yeah, yeah, I got I got sick from that pretty much. Uh, I awesome. think I think Stripe Bass is because I remember uh, the video that we made, Taku, resuscitating yeah, yeah. the Stripe Bass. Yeah, the Stripe and Bass. And yeah. that's is our also got sick with a striped bass. Uh -huh. I think striped bass is yep. the killer. Uh, <laughs> good. I mean, there, I see a lot of comments there on our video that saying, dude, you should not be eating raw striped bass because the parasite on that one is not visible. You can't really see it in your naked eyes. And you got sick from it, June? No, I did not because oh. I'm Filipino. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I'm Japanese too. I don't get sick. A lot of striped bass raw, and I've never gotten sick from from that. Yeah, striped. No, it's it sh some striped bass have parasites for sure, but uh, parasites are visible to the naked eye. It's not bacteria. You know, bacteria okay. is not visible, but parasites are visible, okay. even though sometimes they may be like really small yeah. and Ugh. you know. And I thought the hard fish that to we see, caught there is, but they're visible. Yeah is really small it's not that you know the big one yeah uh, what about you, every, Miguel? Yeah. What about you yeah. Miguel? have you ever gotten sick over anything that you've eaten off your boat that you caught <laughs> not off my boat my cooking gets me sick <laughs> <laughs> hey how about the salmon sushi I, I was like giving Miguel some tips on salmon oh yeah dude that was killer uh, oh yeah sushi rolls were like two and a half inches round three inches round they were massive <laughs> <laughs> dude that looked real good was that a was that belly cut it looks yes. like so deep and orange. Ah oh, man. Yes. Who's ready for salmon um, season? I am. Oh yeah. Taco, are you gonna catch your first salmon? I need a salmon, man. <laughs> yeah. I hate you, June. You go out your first time. Oh, I got a salmon. <laughs> what do, <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> it's always, always, uh, always teasing me about not netting that. Doesn't thing, count. I caught it. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you half credit. How about that? <laughs> Uh, but my first salmon was with Matt. Thanks, Matt. Oops. Yeah, you got it. You handled it. And the big one, too. Yeah. Got two, I think, that day. Yeah, you got two that day. Or no? I got, um, I got one. You got the bigger, the biggest one. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I, got a question. I got a question from Fun Collector. He asked, what's the best time of the year? I would say it's right now. Everything is like season or already in season. What about you guys? Yeah. Ish, I think your mic is needs to be replugged in. But I will say that like the the summer months for me, like yeah, like May to like September, October even, like those are great months. And but and then on top of that, I mean we're just like lucky to have fish year round. I mean during the winter we catch crab, during the yeah. you know early spring months we got surf perch, and then you know the summer is like the big deal: salmon, halibut, ling cod striped bass whatever yeah uh, but yeah i guess if i had to pick a couple of months i'd pick the you know the middle of the summer for sure is my mic better yeah that's good yeah okay. yep I, I just sounds can't good move, i guess yeah but i was saying like Adam well said, i was basically saying it's for rockfish you know what yeah. sorry you get you guys are all frozen on my screen but for <laughs> rockfish it's really good all year round that's one reason why i like it and the rockfish, they stay in one area. So if you find a good rock fishing spot, you almost are always guaranteed no matter what time of the year. Some, some times of the season, they might be a little bigger, but you're almost guaranteed to catch something. I find rock fishing from shore. Yeah. Wait, what's yeah. the question? <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your favorite time of the year to fish? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, May, like what Adam say, said, May to August. That's my, that's, that's a stripe best season. I think it all depends on what, what type of fish you like. To catch. Target, uh, targeting. Yeah. 
for yeah. me, I think my favorite, I mean, I like to target them all, but my favorite is like halibut and salmon, those two. So, yeah. so yeah, the summer months, you know, May to whatever, August, is scary. those are the big ones for me. Yeah, I see uh, Bay and Beyond Fishing, Zico in the comments. Just want to say hi, Zico. I was actually thinking of Zico the other day. I was like, Zico. I like Zico. I haven't what's seen him from him. I think he's been on a break or something. So what's up, Zico? Good to see you're still alive. <laughs> actually, Zico was the one that introduced. Uh, I saw Zico first. Uh, Matt, sorry, let's rephrase that. I saw Taku first on Zico's video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah that was my first collab with Zico. Bay and Beyond Fishing. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, how's it go? Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. We kind of covered this but uh, last video, but I'll ask it again. We'll do a round table. Uh, what's your favorite fish to eat, like Bay Area caught fish to eat? I'll start with you, Adam. Me, salmon, number one. June? Perch. I like perch. I like eating perch. Taku? Rockfish. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, McGill? Halibut. Halibut. Mats? Rockfish for sure. Okay. Right, well, I guess no fish is safe out here. We got all kinds of fish. <laughs> yeah. Fish, what about you? I said it in the last one because it hits me right in the childhood. <laughs> sand dabs. The sand dabs. Oh, sand dabs. <laughs> you know oh, what? Yeah. I, I said sand dabs last time. And I thought like people would be like, you know, you're stupid. Like a lot of people in the comments were like, dude, sand dabs, you're right ish. Oh, maybe they didn't say you're right, but they're like, they're giving me uh, some some props for, That's, for saying that. Yeah, that they're not, they're being really nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Oh, the, oh. the honesty comes out. I see. But you know what? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 sand dabs, <laughs> I think it's like that. Uh, it's that fish you don't think about unless you've had it a few times and you, you fry them up right. It's one of those things where I think it's like a childhood thing and I just, it, it just connects me to like, you know, that, that time. And uh, I mean, salmon like very close second but i don't even think my wife knows that i mean i don't even think i where i like it's, i don't even think i know question. i can buy sand dabs you you, you say sand dab is your favorite one but i don't think i've seen a single sand dab video on your channel yeah. well, I, I, don't, I don't know where to get them my uncles do that's true that's, that's true, true. <laughs> well there's, there's a lot of things that are on my channel because i haven't caught them yet <laughs> hey well you catch them in deep water right yeah yeah they're about 250 yeah. 300 feet yeah and yeah. uh once you find them man you'll just you'll put 40 pounds of sand dabs on the boat and there's, yeah. and there's no limit on sand dabs right uh the no there's no bag limit on those no limit either you can use 20 hooks if you want yep <laughs> there's no size limit too right need, no size limit i need i need a i need your sand dab hole miguel <laughs> dude let's go it's so okay. much fun i love all it right. all right hey you know that's i think that's a fun that'll be a fun trip to take my kid out because he's at that Absolutely. age where... i was just gonna say that yeah, that's a fun kid trip. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Hey, so again, we're all gathered here today to um, help me give away the charter spot. Um, somebody um, on the fundraiser list, and maybe somebody in this chat will be giving, uh, will, will win a spot to fish with all of us, um, uh, hopefully soon, whenever Monterey opens up and our schedules allow. So uh, I want to do preface two things. So for anyone that's won something uh, tackle-wise, if you uh, donate over $5, you are now back in, right? So you have a chance to win here. Um, <laughs> there's two things going on. So I realize a lot of people um, donated out of the Bay Area or out of state. So thank you again. Um, so you're not going to be able to take advantage of this spot. Um, so I, what I want to do is give you the choice, right? So um, all the YouTubers here um, agree to um, send somebody merch. So we're going to have a YouTuber merch package. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw three names um, and in in order of the people selected will allow people to choose if they want the merch package shipped to them because maybe they're out of state and they know they can't make it on the charter or maybe they're local or they can make it to the charter and uh, they get to pick. So we'll pick three names because we're going to have the first two either claim the merch or the charter spot and the third person will be back up because it's like notoriously hard to give away stuff on YouTube. Um, I don't know what it is about YouTube, but it's hard to get in touch with people. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. Isn't it, right? Yeah, it yeah. totally is. Yeah. Like enter YouTube giveaways, but they don't like to claim them. For some yeah, reason. people yeah. like to enter, but then like it's so hard to give them away. So that's what we're going to do right now. So Adam, if you could share your screen with me, we're going to pick three names. Uh, give me some names. Uh, in, in those three names, we're going to I'll write them down in order. So we'll see. We'll see. So, yeah. number so, one. Are we here we go. Lucky winner number one. Who's it going to be? 43. 
43. And again, Adam is picking randomly on his computer. I can't see what he's doing, but I do have a list of names. And number 43 is Raymond Fong. Oh, I think that's a local guy. So I, I think for sure that guy's going to probably pick the, uh, the charter spot. So Raymond, if you're here, um, congratulations. If not, I'll follow up with you via email. You have your um, choice of the charter or the merch first. So Adam, give me a second name. Number two, we have 36. <laughs> 36. <laughs> All right, let's see. That is uh, Paul Hoshi Nagamato. So he already won tackle. He gets okay. the, the second spot. Yep. Well, hey, when you donate a lot, you get a lot of entries and you get a lot of chance at winning. So, yeah. All right. All right. And then now the third spot. Your Please third. give me that third spot. The last and final potential winner of uh, something through my fundraiser. Adam, please. Hit that. 235. Ooh, 235. New number. Ooh. New name. 235. That goes to <laughs> Danny Wu. Isn't that oh. our YouTuber? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think. Isn't, isn't that our YouTuber Uber? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I wow. One, but that's okay. Hey, you know what, Danny, uh, not only did Danny uh, donate, but he also won the Easter egg uh, giveaway that we did on our last channel or our last episode. And uh, I was like, hey, I'm going to give you your $20 Amazon card. He's like, hey, put it, um, throw it back into the fundraiser. I'm glad to donate it uh, for a good cause. Plus give myself four more spots. So Danny, thanks again, pays to be generous. He could have taken that Amazon card for yourself, but no, he threw it yeah. back in the fundraiser. So it pays to be generous. Yeah, Danny, awesome. He's the nice guy for sure. Yeah. He's the, he's the best guy. And that's it. So thanks again yeah. for, for everyone watching. Um, if you were a part of the fundraiser, um, that's the end of the fundraiser giveaway. Again, win-win situation. If you guys didn't win and you guys are disappointed, all that money that you donated, 100% of it goes towards a good cause of the um, Early Horizons Daycare Center in Sunnyvale. So props to you guys. Really appreciate it. So, yeah. Well, you know what? We're, I think we peaked at like 226, something like that. Yeah, man, we loaded Dang, up. Dang, record. Yeah. Broke yeah. the record by 100. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it only took like, uh, like one and a half million subscribers worth of channels <laughs> <laughs> to, to get 226 yeah. people or something like that. So, um, yeah, we're, I think we're also record like longest show ever. I think we're right around the, the two hour mark. So, appreciate everyone's time in the, the comments. And uh, I think we'll, Maybe we'll close it out with the uh, with the last AMA. Ask uh, us anything. So if you guys uh, have any more questions uh, in the the comments, feel free to send them over for myself, Adam, June, Matt, Taku, or Miguel. Let's see. And uh, Miguel said peace. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Did I do that? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm getting back, curious back. over here. <laughs> <laughs> said any plans on coming to Texas? Is anyone here going to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Sabio. He wants us all to go to Texas to catch uh, freshwater fish. They have some good big bass out there. Yeah. They they have those uh alligator gar. Um I I'd love to catch an alligator gar. I've caught one of those. Did I just watch really? uh... Arkansas? Oh, full wow. of eggs. That was, well, TJ caught it honestly. We were bow fishing <laughs> when I was with him on the boat, so I'll just count it as mine. <laughs> Yeah, but it was it was huge. Those things are crazy looking. Yeah, and they fight like crazy. And I heard they're like really, really picky as far as like what they bite. So you gotta it's one of those fish you like you know, spend hours and hours and hours and hours and days and days trying to catch. Um, yeah. that's that's on my bucket list. Um I think I've seen a few um black tip H videos that have kind of cemented it for me. If I were to go to Texas, I would like to catch there and uh I like a uh, is it land shark fishing? um the guy that does a lot of jetty fishing down there and coastal shark fishing i love his channel so um, i'd love to do the like, gulf stuff too yeah um i'm gonna answer one question because i think it's they're asking me uh, about my tournament the tournament this uh for everybody that is watching right now uh you all know that we postponed the more than fishing tournament so as of now i think we're looking good when it comes to this uh, situation here in California, when it comes to COVID-19. Um, we'll, we'll see, we're still on the, trying to make a decision if it's, if it's cleared up by June or by end of May. 
and then we're gonna pursue it. Uh, wait, maybe we can do it on July, but we're not sure yet. If we're gonna do it, we might have to do it uh, like what we usually do. I did this last year, the online fishing tournament. So we might have to do it that way. I'm leaning towards to that. But uh, as of now, I'm just giving you an idea on the plans. But as of now, we don't have a concrete decision yet because of our situation. But like what I said, it's for me, based on my observations on what's going on right now, it's, it's looking good. I think we kind of maintain that flat thingy, right? So we'll keep you posted. We'll definitely keep everybody posted on what's going on in the tournament. Thanks for asking. That's from CID Vicious. Cool. Yep. Cool. Miguel, do you have any uh, questions for us now that you're in the room? Um, why you gotta do that to me? <laughs> hey, you're in the spotlight. There's 190 yeah. people wait, waiting for your waiting for your your comment. What's up, man? No. You know, I see? Uh, you've listened to enough of my comments and opinions on things. I've, I've <laughs> <laughs> all of you have. <laughs> so uh, I, I have a I have a question for Miguel. What's going on? I think didn't you you have a Boston Whaler, right? And weren't you trying to sell it at one point, like a, a raffle? That's correct. Uh, so I have a um, 18 foot aluminum Starcraft that I was trying to raffle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that started off really well. Sold about I think it was about between 45 and 50 uh, tickets. Um, hundred dollars of tickets. I think a hundred dollar a ticket. Um, but I, I end up purchasing a whaler. I still have the whaler. Was the raffle successful? It was Is that how you sold it for me. I think it did really well for the following that I have. Oh, okay. Uh, and the support, but being that you know that the support you guys have, I mean, everyone helped. I think Adam and Ish and everyone posted it like on their story. But it, it takes a lot of effort, and if you know me, <laughs> I kind of get like one track and then i fade real fast and just go fishing um and so <laughs> you guys deserve a ton of credit for following up with uh with like the videos and the content and oh, editing and stuff i have so much content just stored in in a cloud that uh <laughs> so that's kind of how i ran my raffle unfortunately I, I did refund everyone i did a venmo paypal so it was really good it was really easy to get the um money back and then i ended up selling it um, I have a friend who's who, who bought it. Oh. Okay, seemed like a great idea. That raffle. It's a yes. I've actually won uh, a couple of vehicles in the past participating in a raffle. <laughs> nice. So I, I, I see the light bulb. I see the light bulb over Matt's head. Are we yeah, gonna get a butterboat raffle? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> raffle. So I was thinking. It's, no, definitely, go. definitely. Don't tempt, I, I, that, Don't tempt me with buying a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Buy as many tickets as you want. <laughs> yeah. so, so matt or uh miguel i don't know if you were watching earlier but um this is like a common thread matt's uh is at least he alluded to starting a terminal tackle maybe a a, a lure line or bait line um sure. I, if you guys follow miguel at native anglers um on instagram he's already kind of moving forward with that and he's got a line already started i've seen pictures of moles he sent me pictures a lot of awesome stuff um how soon are we going to start seeing uh your lure out there in, in the world are they ready for purchase yeah so those are ready for purchase um unfortunately like this is this is relatively new to me and a little bit more like adam we were fishermen first and then we started jumping into social media platforms um uh, excuse me um so i i find myself getting distracted with the fishing and then matt you know owning a boat can be a little tough um so I'm learning a couple boats, uh, service and making it look good and run right and making sure you're running trips and things like that. So, yeah. um, but I think Taku had got some samples, uh, June, I asked, I think I forgot to send June's, but there are some out there Ouch. for free. <laughs> <laughs> june can't catch a link so don't worry about it no no I, guess, <laughs> I just don't have a time to get out there put me there yeah. i'll catch a link but um yeah your no, chance. So, my idea is to launch um, something promising, successful, um, solid in 2021. This COVID thing really threw a big uh, wrench um, 
it, I, we already we looked at a new boat. We already looked at a new boat. We had everything for a new boat, and uh, this COVID hit, and it, it's just it's a disaster on that end. Um, yeah. But it is what it is. So 2021 uh, merchandise tackle line, um, a lot a lot better trips. Um, still can't fix seasickness. <laughs> Ask Matt. See, figured it out. Man, uh, the scopalamine patches—they sell them for like thirty dollars a patch over here in the United States. Yeah. When I went to Korea earlier, they have them over the counter. You don't need a prescription. You can get them for th- like three dollars for five or something like that. Okay. Wow. How many did you buy when you were in Korea? Uh, about 10, 10, 20 packs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pack <laughs> yeah. That's what I would do. But yeah. it makes me feel like a zombie. You ever try those things? It's like, yeah, and yep. it makes my mouth all dry. And like, yep. yeah, it's a Man. bad feeling. You're well, drugs, huh? Yeah, it's it's no fun. Yeah, you know, it it's it really isn't fun. And then being seasick is never fun. But I, yeah. I think if uh, yeah, I mean, you guys fish with me. If I've been sick, we just keep on fishing. I, except that one time with Taku, just put me in a coma. <laughs> yeah. that, was that, was, that was pretty bad Miguel was, was like I'm cool. done I quit I'm gonna sum up boat I'm out of here <laughs> yeah 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 you, you know what does anybody else feel that way like if you just have a rough day on the water where like everything is going wrong yeah you know, everything is snagging all your lines are tangled you're like constantly like, cutting yourself with your own knives like as soon as you get back to shore you're just like I'm done like I don't want to do this anymore I'm just gonna delete the channel Yep. It's just yeah that's fishing no, though talk but... almost went home with my boat oh, that day okay. i was so <laughs> done <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then you you know you sit back and you realize there's those days that like where everything does go right and it's like so epic and you can put like amazing content out there and uh it makes it worth it so yeah it it, is. yeah it's, fishing's a grind man i mean like not everybody can do it and not everybody can do it well and not everybody can do it well on youtube and so I think for anyone sure. that can survive the initial like grind and get into the tens of thousands of subscribers, that's when you kind of started gaining traction with the, the, the community and the platform. And then you turn it into a career if you're like that, that successful. So, yeah. So, yeah. So uh, I don't know, final few questions from the audience before we cut everybody off and let everybody go back to their real lives. I mean, Taku's got some editing to do now that he's been fishing. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just one. Did you just catch? Hmm? Did you catch striped bass? Yeah, I did. Dude. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> did you use yeah. did you use the rod? I did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like, I just it up for you. You can just reel it in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll say that again. I was telling June if he's gonna ask so many questions, he might as well just have you hook it for him so he can reel it in. <laughs> uh, <I know. laughs> yeah, spoilers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what he does with salmon. <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> uh, yeah uh, yeah hey so somebody keeps asking the same question uh matt have you fished with lime kiln on highway one have you fished uh, lime kiln lime. is that a, a, that sounds like a spot maybe or a city lime kiln on highway that sounds one sounds familiar that sounds familiar i don't i think that's farther south um by san Sim- no, i don't know i don't know if no no i haven't put it shortly okay. sounds like a spot that matt doesn't want to give up so i i understand <laughs> i understand um somebody wants to say what's up matt mustache bros i don't have a mustache adam do you have a mustache it's shaved it? literally like today <laughs> hey adam i have a quick adam sure are you wearing a do-rag under your hat <laughs> <laughs> so take it off and show him what happens <laughs> We just take it off and show them what happens. Literally a, a headband I got from... <laughs> well, put your hat on. But yeah, you can't see anything. So that's oh, okay. well, you can see your hair now. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, we, we were having like extreme technical difficulties because his yeah. computer can't render a Zoom background like June and Mike can. So he's actually set up like a green screen, but his anything, oh. black, anything black gets erased. So his eyebrows, his hair, oh. like it, see? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a basement show. What do you guys expect? Right? <laughs> you guys, but for now, I'm this you know, material here. <laughs> I thought it was a do rag. I was, I was waiting. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> yeah. All right, maybe we'll we'll wrap it up with a question I saw kind of float by um, earlier. Um, what's the dream fish for everyone uh, here today? Um, Miguel, I'll start with you. Dream fish oh, anywhere in the world. 
what do, what do you want to put on deck uh, before you die? Oh, geez. What don't I want to put on? You got one fish. You know what? Catch. That is that is a very tough question for me. Sorry. I have to catch it on my boat. Um, okay. So I'm not going to go out and, and, and do that. But if I do catch it, it'll be with probably Adam because he's the only one crazy enough to go out there with me. Oh, we going bluefin? There you go. And we'll chase oh. him. We'll just keep going. <laughs> Dude, make it happen. He's full, okay. he's full time. Sorry. I'll go out there. I'll still, I'll spend, you know, 12 out there, 12 hours out there looking. Between <laughs> you and Budo, um, you guys are nuts. And so I'll just drive and <laughs> we'll, we'll find them. All right. Hey, I, was, I wasn't going to say bluefin, but it might be bluefin now for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about white sea bass? You're, I mean, you're in that area. Have you caught, have you ever caught a white sea bass on your boat? I have not. No, I haven't targeted them. Um, getting used to just ready for halibut, ready for sand dab, ready for salmon, ready for rockfish, ready for crab. Um, and then all of a sudden the sea bass are in and then you find out that they're gone. Uh, so I don't, I don't work that way. Um, because we are running trips, the boats prepared for those trips. Right. Uh, um, yeah. So again, like Adam has a magic t- tackle box that's ready for sea bass on the way back in, um, <laughs> from, from limits of rockfish. And, uh, yeah, I just I haven't dialed that down yet. Okay, so the bluefin. Can I ask without giving up? Like I don't know. I don't know if it's like a secret, but like, is that like a far offshore? Like you got to go like a hundred miles out. Warm water. Just, you just got to find warm water. So Mexico. you got to go south then. South. Mexico. Far south. Okay. Okay, I, I don't want to give too much away, but they have they do catch them in the Bay Area. More, yes. Bluefin tuna. Yeah, bluefin. Wow. Yeah. And, and less, much far less than 100 miles. Dude, wow. that's... Yeah. And they're, they're, they're not what you see on TV. They're 80, 100 pounds, 200 pounds. But you caught one. You chased it. You put in the work. It's very... pounds, man. I, I... <laughs> I'm down. That, that's my dream fish. That's my dream. You what? You what? June, you have to say yes at 9.30 at night when I text you. <laughs> Dude, yeah. like... Gotta I'm do your part. My baby texting me like, "Let's go." I'm like, "No." Oh. <laughs> anyways, that's that's my dream t- uh, dream fish to catch. Tuna. Bluefin tuna. I've been, yeah, yeah. Bluefin tuna. really. I've been I've been dreaming to catch that. Wow. I heard uh, what, back in LA. I used to live in LA. I was really trying to catch them, but I couldn't. You know, you have to go to the charter boat, which is you have like 50 people, like cramped in one boat. I don't know. It's it's just tough. And then I really that's that's really my dream fish to catch. And yeah. Yeah, the problem is just the time for me to go out. Sure. There. Yeah. What about you, Matt? What's your dream fish? Anywhere in the world. I think my dream fish is a big old chrome steelhead, ocean run steelhead on the mm-hmm. fly. A fly really? rod. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Haven't yeah. never caught a steelhead yet. We catch like a 10 plus pounder, 15 pounder. That'd be really fun. That's a beast. Yeah. I feel like that's like a, an American, like kind of dream fish, just <laughs> fly fishing for like, yeah, there steelhead. Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to fly fish in Montana. That's like, you mentioned that earlier. I've always like, like I associate Montana with like, <laughs> with fly fishing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I've seen a river run through it a few times. I've seen a few pictures. What? Yes. <laughs> Some paintings. What about, what about you, Taku? Dream fish. I think I gotta. I think I. I gotta catch a big old GT. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Like from shore too. That would be. That would be crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? I think. I think that's mine too. Like I see. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like one of the first guys I started following was Dennis Barit, and he makes it look so easy. But yeah, a shore caught GT. I think the challenge of even having a chance at landing it, getting that picture, mm-hmm. you know, catching it and yeah. landing it to a point where you can turn it back and send it back relatively yeah. unharmed. Uh, the challenge of that, um, yeah, it's just fascinating. Yeah. And like, I don't have to eat it. I just want to say I caught it. Um, what about you, Adam? Last one. Uh, you know, guys, I, I, I like getting all these thoughts. Like Miguel just mentioned bluefin and now I'm like, oh man, that's, that's on top of my list. But I think I, I have to say GT as well. That's what I was going to say at the beginning um but like i just get these like like i saw you catch that sturgeon and then boom sturgeon was bumped right to the top of my list (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you have the most realistic shot of, of everyone here, I think, yeah. you know, with, with Surgeon. But, um, but yeah. yeah, I think GT is like, if I, if I had to just stick with one, GT would be the one. Like, just the fact that you can catch it, like, top water. Yeah. They're, like, you know, super strong and, like, just gigantic and, you know, everything's going against you. That, that's... Dude, have you... Have you seen Black Eight? Uh, Black Tip H. Yeah, he just catches it all, like off the rocks. Like he just drop a, a bait, and he will catch it in Florida. The GDs, right? No, I don't think so. I think we were thinking those are jacks. They're they're related. Those are jacks. They're, yeah, they're, they're related to GTs, but the GTs get like much bigger. Yeah, I thought that's already big. I'm like, <laughs> well, it, it they're is, big. They're big. they're a poor man's GT. We're yeah. talking. Like, <laughs> pounds and plus yeah and like well, i don't even know like indonesia or South oh here I, I just i just saw one on the gram hold on i'll show you i'll show you what you're missing the closest i've ever caught was that jack Raval and yeah and that was good though that was cool yeah yeah jack yeah. yeah i was i was That's, i was so stoked for that, that one looks similar to gt right yeah, yeah very they're, similar they're closely related so. yeah yeah super similar profile yeah. in yeah, japan man. uh where i was in okinawa they in the summertime the GT come up into the rivers, and it's crazy. Like they catch GT in the river. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Oh, Dude, one. it's massive. Yeah. yeah, GTs come up rivers. So they mm. what's that? What's that term up where the they river. can be freshwater and saltwater? It's like amber, amber, uh, something, something. Yeah, <laughs> but that's cool. They can Salt run up the. They fresh. run up rivers. So they, yeah. do they run up the rivers to spawn like salmon? No, no, just to eat. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. And wow. they're like, it's not even like a a natural river. They're just man-made rivers, right? That just um that go into the ocean. Yeah. And the GT come up those rivers and they're just like these cement rivers. And you can see their fins like on the top of the water just swimming. And yeah, then if you, yeah have you guys watched uh, Fishing Gang in Japan? I did a collab with them while I was yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And those guys catch those river gts and man it's insane man you're, sounds like you're gonna go back there that sounds like that's on your on your uh bucket list yeah yeah, yeah, yeah your shore yeah, fishing well, japan yeah, was like yeah. yeah i didn't even know that style of fishing like you could catch what we call mahi mahi off of rocks there like i was so, always yeah. associate that with like with like uh i don't know like mexico fishing or gulf fishing uh -huh. yeah i didn't know that was a thing in, insane because in, in japan that area in japan in okinawa they consider mahi mahi to be trash fish, so the commercial fishermen don't go after them. So there's plenty of mahi mahi. Wow! <clears throat> and oh. the thing is, um, the um, Azusa was telling me the guy from Fishing Gang, the windier it is, uh, the better the fishing will be because the wind pushes the bait towards the rocks, and then oh. the mahi mahi close come closer to to shore. And so then, I'm... man, dude, yeah. everything go to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Just catch some trash fish <laughs> yeah, yeah our, our trash thing. our trash fish is smelt how did that happen how do we not get mahi 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 <laughs> i know right uh, that sucks, yeah. man. but if you're gonna go to japan for fishing you gotta go to okinawa it's not okinawa. the mainland japan it's uh yeah. it's the it's island the, the south, the south. Right? yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah oh, Anna, amazing anadromatus i'm seeing a lot of people in the in the anadromatus is that right Anadromin okay. yeah Something like yeah, that. Androgynous yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, before uh, before we all say goodbye, Taku, last time you um, shook the world and said you're you're running off to New Zealand uh, when yeah. you get a chance. How close are you are you to to um, making that those plans reality? A reality? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard anything from the uh, application, the visa application, because I I'm guessing it's still on hold in New Zealand, like. The, uh, immigration department or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on really. I just know New Zealand has been announcing like they're Corona free. So I'm like, yeah. dang, I want to get out of here and go over there. <laughs> but you know, who knows how many people are they going to be letting in and yeah. you know what the immigration is going to be like. Yeah. Well, they stick you in quarantine. You could say you're used to it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Taku. Taku. Yeah. yeah. Ask you a question. Yeah, what do you think about uh, like Fukushima? Isn't that still pumping out radiation? Do you think uh, it's affecting the fish in Japan? And what about the like uh, current bringing anything over to the West Coast here? To the, to the, Pacific, the whole Pacific, right? Yeah. 
um honestly uh, when i go when i go to japan like they yeah they don't they don't seem to be really bothered by it, it or like affected by it at all um and you know i was kind of curious about that too and then people were uh, people always comment you know on yeah, my videos especially i don't know if you guys get them too like i get these comments all the time that just say fukushima dumbass yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then yeah anyway it doesn't matter where i am it's like as long as i'm in the pacific and especially the ones in japan <clears throat> but honestly I wonder yeah if yeah, i wonder if why that, that is if okay so my personal opinion if that's the thing that's gonna kill me you know out of everything else in the world whatever man like <laughs> there's so many other worse things than you know what we could be doing it's you might gain awful. you might gain superpowers or something you never yes. know dude yeah you never maybe, know maybe able to like swim underwater and yeah. catch the fish with your hands <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Might> be able <laughs> to talk to fish who knows <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's thought about this <laughs> Well, thanks guys for for joining again. This is uh, the the shelter show episode eight, the, the big one. Um, it's been uh, it's been real. I think this is the the most stacked deck that we've ever had. So thanks to Moo for giving us the the COVID update from not only the fishing side but from what the, the side that counts, the EMS side. Uh, Twenty years of experience, and he says just be careful, be safe. Um, it's a very real thing, and uh, we'll see what happens in phase two. And uh, thanks for uh, to Matts for joining as our uh, featured guest today. It's been a long time coming, so Ooh, thanks for having um, a calendar free. Doesn't seem like you're doing too much if you're only putting out two videos this year, <laughs> but ooh. on the road to recovery and, and back in the game, right? So uh, yep, yeah, for sure. yeah, look out for a maybe future podcast, future tackle line, and a butterboat raffle in his future. So we, mm -hmm. we learned a lot from him. Miguel trying to figure out the, the Monterey uh, situation for us as we get Raymond out there. I'm assuming Raymond's going to uh, take us out or opt in for the charter. I think he's a local guy. And I think I saw him in the comments, actually. I think he's down to come out. And uh, Taku, thanks for joining in. And, and I mean, I didn't want to position, I didn't want to position that charter as a contest between us, but just saying, Taku, I think outfished me last time. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. he caught the- Yeah, I did. I think <laughs> caught a lot of link caught last time. I, did yeah. you catch any? <laughs> no, but yeah. I caught a Cabazon at like 160 feet, which I think is oh, harder, yeah. which is That's harder, true. I think. So, so I, I, I have that feather in my cap. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everyone in the comments. If you didn't win, too bad. But for, for anyone that did win, congratulations. And thanks, most importantly, for the fundraiser uh, contributions. Your money is going to go a long way uh, to some uh, teachers that could, could use it. And uh, subscribe. Adam, myself, June, Matt, Miguel, follow him on Instagram. And uh, Taku, follow him everywhere. You guys know who we are. Thanks again for watching. Thanks, boys. Really appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been yeah. Really See you guys. Bye, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. Peace. Peace.